Greetings, Earth people and pool fans around the world. Welcome to two, day two of Q Lee's Connecticut Nine Ball Open. Uh, we are here at US Billiards, Jason Shaw's Pool Hall in Connecticut uh, for a World Nine Ball Tour ranking event. And this is the losers' dis uh, qualification round. So, no, no, it's still. Yeah, oh, yeah. This okay. is the qualification okay, round. Yeah. So each of these next matches uh, gives one player to go through to the last 16. There's already eight players undefeated at waiting. And we are starting with the match Coping Yi against Anton Raga. This is MH Potting Penglaze. This is Mad Apple Billiards streaming. And I'm here in the comedy box with my friends, Kendall Quickfire Cook and also Patrick Glynn. This is one responsible for all these great views you're going to get. Thanks, MH. Thanks for that. It's been a lot of fun. It has. And this so is... So far, one, one day down. We've got a lot of good names already knocked out of this tournament yesterday. And I know Copigny got a little bit of an upset, got knocked down to the, to the, to the loser's one-loss side. Uh, and uh, Anton Raga is playing very well. Anton wins the lag. And is Winner go home. Him. That's right. Now these tables so far yesterday have been playing breaking really easy. Everybody's making the one ball in the side. Real question is where's the two and what are you going to do with it? It's an interesting uh, opening shot. We're going to run this up the rail. Yeah, I mean. You could play safety up by the five or four, six, too. Yeah, the first, two, first shot of the match. Are you going to play it safe or go aggressive? He's got. He's also got a bank shot on the two, which he might like. I think only if you're going to play that uh, two way. Drawing it up, table. Yeah, and the three was nicely in the middle. Did play to make it. Great shot. Yeah, he'd like to have been a little bit off the rail here so he could control the cue ball here as he shoots this, this three ball. He needs to get nicely on the four. And while you're down there, does he does he have to knock or develop the six ball? Maybe or, with or the four, he, I think. He... Or is he just going to leave that for a six nine Karom shot? Mm, puts that in the heart of the pocket. He's looking good, isn't he already? Yeah, he would have liked to have the angle there. You're talking about developing the six. I think if he would have came a little shorter, he could have nudge the six up a bit still played to the five yeah, and he just might like that chrome shot where you just still don't, don't want to mess with it nice draw shot there to get on the five well this shot here this will tell us what he's thinking here just gonna float there two rails around and i think you're right play the caramel on the nine yeah and that little angle there that he walked over and pointed to tells you yeah it's definitely uh, lining up for the for the nine ball here. Yeah, it's just a little bit steeper than he wanted to be. And if he'd, if he'd run forward a little bit, it, this could be a natural sort of rolling shot. But here he has to sort of stun into the nine. He's just lining up. This is, I'd be surprised to see him miss that ball. Oh, cue ball held up, so he's all right. Taking the first one down. Start the match with a break and run. That's always a good way to start. Replay of this uh, carom shot. Just stops it in time. And Kopi Nyi just sitting majestically in the background, watching, waiting.
and it just shows how important the lag is. So if all goes well, we're supposed to have another uh, stream that's going to be up and live at some point today, so you'll have a choice between a couple of matches. It is up. All right. Who's on that table? Let's take a look. Lee Van Corteza against uh, who? David Alcady. So that's the other YouTube stream. Yeah, and David Alcady was playing great yesterday. And he stayed late to watch his... Uh, Make sure you guys subscribe too. So Sorry about that. Though. His uh, Spanish counterpart or uh, a young up-and-coming Spanish player who beat Darren Appleton yesterday. And David Alcady was on the sidelines rooting him on. Yes. Not nice for the Darren Appleton fans. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, there you, that's about a perfect break. One ball in the side pocket. He's got a really nice line on the two and fairly open table here. He's just going to run around the pattern. It'll sound like we're in an Indian call center, possibly. Well, it is. Maybe. Got to have a divider. And the way these tables have been breaking, and it seems like most of the players have got it down, um, the cut break and the one ball in the side, that lends itself to uh, break and runs. And... Uh, doesn't matter what the what your world rating is if your opponent makes you sit in your chair and you don't get to shoot there is nothing you can do about it yeah it's always about the break and and so right now this is the anton raga show one well, i mean i think uh more than anything they changed the break up to change the cue ball right i mean so it's not as predictable yeah, and I thought because they are breaking out of the box and th the idea of that is to make it a little bit tougher to uh, break and make everything easy. But uh, I'm noticing they're not even, with this cut break, they're not even going to the edge of the box. So yeah, after the after the break, the cue ball hits the rack and still has a lot of speed in it. And that's the, really the unpredictable part is, is where the cue ball ends up. Uh, but the predictable part is they're making the one in the side very regularly and uh, the wing born a lot too. He's got to avoid the nine here. He's going to have to. The nine's kind of right in the natural path, so he's going to have to alter it a little bit. And Anton Rager is world ranked number 49 in the world. According to the updated uh, matchroom world world rankings. Well, everything I've seen him shoot to has been uh, extremely well hit. I haven't seen him make too many mistakes. And if he keeps his break going, he's not going to miss much. Yeah, it's a race to nine. He's 2-0 up. Kopi Yi has not shot yet. And under these conditions, I do expect to see someone stringing a lot of racks together. And you can see John Mora from Canada in the background, majestically. What's with the word majestic today? Uh, John Mora has a majestic quality about him. He you just uh, said that about coping. Well, he also, look at him. Two of the maj most majestic pool players right there. Well, down to the final 24, correct? That's where we're at. Yes. Um, we got 16 players who are on the winner's side who are already waiting in the last 16. No, eight. And these are playing, oh, eight. Off, these are playing off for the other eight to That's make right. up the final 16.
Well, is he going to get a shot again? Yeah, and then you see the, uh, the cue ball. Blue sideways cross table. Almost inevitably gets collisions with those balls in the middle of the table. And now the billiards gods have said, well, this is a little tough. He still has a shot here, but to shoot the two in and get on the three. It's going to be a heck of a stroke sitting on the rail like that yeah. if you do even try. Well, I think he will. I mean, a stop shot there isn't horrible either. You know, If he can just hit it to stun it. Or just roll it in gently and, yeah, take a long cut on the that also. on the three. If you get your hand on the table, you'd be playing a little draw shot there, but can't do that. Yeah, the angle is good, and you're just trying to control it in any way other than, yeah, I see, push out. So we get first look at uh, Ko Pinyi in this match. Left with a dilemma. Kind of the same challenge. choice, right? Yeah, he hasn't changed much by playing that push. It's just made it a little bit more obvious. Is he going to forfeit his first opportunity? You know, and if Coping he hands his back, does he did. An Anton pushing it, you know, just a couple inches aside, what difference does that make? Not much, really. He's got waste no time, so he knows what he was. Okay, so he was, yeah, played position for a. Didn't quite work. Safety there. Yeah, he kind of threw his hands up like he wasn't happy about that. Well, because he's just set him up to get him worse. <laughs> only, say, only thing even semi-safe against these guys is dead stuck. Even that's not safe sometimes. Yeah, and this might be one of those shots where you sort of half ball it and get the cue ball on one side rail and the two ball on the other. Bring the four and the eight into play. And break it up. But he left kind of a window. I mean, I don't know if it's... A, I think it might be hittable through there. It does look like he's right on that window. I think the three ball... Well, I don't know. Don't know if the three will stop and the two will go. And we don't, can't really tell from here if he has a clean shot at the potting angle on the two wall. So he is jumping over the over the edge of the eight. Oh, almost got it in there. Looks like he had room. Three balls are going to go for him, but left him stuck over the top of the ball. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really difficult shot to stroke well. He got lucky and unlucky. Gave himself that chance. He played a good jump shot. Well, asking him to go over and uh, asking the ref to watch the hit. Yeah, because it is all ball fouls only. You touch this six ball in any way. Well, made that look easy, didn't he? What a great stroke. Man, Anton's looking good now. Should be able to just bump the eight out of the way. you got to be a little bit careful not to get it just wrong. Kind of use the eight as a stopper. Stun it over. Yeah. Just wants to make yeah. sure he hits this eight in the right spot so that he doesn't interfere with any of the other balls or put the eight in a terrible spot. And he's got to dig down a little bit, doesn't he? Just a touch, you know, just stun it over. Shot. <laughs> Improve the lie of the eight. Got good on the five. It's 
going to roll up to the line, I think. Looks like he was looking for that side pocket. That's going to work again for him, and then uh, it's looking good. Oh, stop shot. Well, so far, Anton is playing perfect. Hoping he had that one safety shot that he played. And you might say he was a little unlucky to end up on the window. But look at this shot, how tough this is. Stroke it. If you got a straight stroke, easy. But yeah, we're not seeing anybody full power great shots. That I've seen. Uh, the only one I saw doing that was Jonas. He he kind of had a little bit different break. I don't know about full power, but definitely harder. Now, if they were not using the mag magic racks, do you think we'd be seeing all these cut breaks quite as much? It seems to me at the moment the only break. Yeah, I mean, if it's working, why change? And he's well, even, even. I mean, he's in the middle. He's even closer to Santa, which puts more speed on his cue ball, more than. Well, right, because it's been about trying to control the cue ball. This cue ball is perfect. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's basically getting the cue ball to sh scoot out sideways, hit the side rail, and come right back again. And on in this occasion, it didn't get hit by any other balls. Something really nice here. But you can Wide do open that. rack. And if you can break like that and play like this... There's no reason for you to ever give up the table. I'd probably like to get to the other side of that. He's going to have to take the long route now. Yeah, and that might have been his choice because it takes the other balls out of play. But he now is going to play a little draw to the, get above the four ball, play the four ball in the same pocket that he's playing the three. I might have the longer way around. That a little light. Yeah, and that makes this a little tricky, isn't it? I mean, he can... He's still favorite to make the four ball. He's got to negotiate the cue ball backwards and forwards and make sure he doesn't let either of the side pockets... Uh, enter into this. Yep, Absolutely fearless. Perfect, fearless. Yeah. yeah, that turned out. Really That's good. a speed. I mean, look at this perfect angle to come over for the six. And he doesn't have to do too much here, really, because he wants a similar kind of angle on the on the seven ball that he can go around the table and get back up for the eight. So he really just wants to come out to the middle of the table here. Ooh. Oh, boy. And this is the first mistake, turning point in the match. Could I be. mean, stretching a little bit, and he was taking it for granted, I think. Yeah. And what a huge difference to this match. You know, we could have could have potentially seen a a whitewash if he kept going the way he did. You could call that an unforced error, really. There was no good reason to miss, miss the six ball there. 
And now, your first look at Koh Pinyi. Waiting patiently for his opportunity. Yeah, now do. And we're just going to see uh, one rail up here, I think. Well, you have to be tough a little. Little tester here. All right, go on the board. Well, Raga, unforced error, Cole taking advantage. Yeah, and well now we get to see if Cole Pinyi is breaking the same, which I'm sure he is. Got uh, anything? So, oh, there's your match you're watching. So we've got Imran Majid uh, is down right now, 4-0 to zero to Jose Alberto Delegado. Um, last night, Jose beat Darren Appleton, knocked him out of the tournament. Everybody uh, else is pretty pretty close. Copin Han is down 4-0 to Carlo Biado. John Moore is up two to one. Cole just trying to get back here, so see what he can do with his break. And he's going all the way closer to the edge of the break box. Yeah, so which is making me assume he's going to hit it just uh, slightly softer. Yeah, and there we go. Q Wolf lost it up table a little bit. I think he can possibly see the two or at least come off the rail first for that two. Yeah, he can see it. He's got to get up table if he wants a chance at making the three. Yeah, I think he's looking to put it between the four and the nine, come around uh, three rails. Yeah, and if he ends up on top of it, you've got three in the side, and if he overshoots, three in the long corner, the same same pocket that the two balls going in. That pretty good. I'm not going to quite get where he wanted, but he's well, I want to be right on it. Yeah, that's one of those shots. He couldn't really hit it hard, otherwise, he would have collided with the four ball. I mean, just having clean control compared to being <coughs> right on top of it gives you a safety option no matter if you had the. Yeah, he's ended up really unlucky actually to be so tight on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he's pointed on the rail there to. The, where he wants to contact the second rail to get behind the four. <coughs> and he wants to make sure that the three ball is kind of also doesn't have a clear part of the pocket when he's done here, just in case he doesn't get behind the four. Hey, just like that. So the three ball is safe. It's not as good as he wanted because now Anton has options. Of choices, yeah. One of them being he could try and make a seven here, carry him off that three. And he's got kind of a stop shot type safety available where he can run through a little bit, be behind the three and, and the seven and the three 
both go around table and then end up down table. I played the seven. Are you going to come out of it? It's a good shot. He didn't uh, necessarily get the reward he was looking for, but uh, made the ball. I think you're going to see him send this up between the four and the nine to that end rail. Kind of hold the cue ball down here. Maybe it goes for it. I don't know. I would think it'd be safe, though. Yeah, I was trying to just get that underneath, behind the nine ball. Other side of the nine, yeah. He's waving at it. Because he knew he wasn't going to be hooking him behind the five. He, he really wanted to have him frozen up and difficult bridging on the five. But he's left an open shot here for, for Copigny. Yeah, and in making this three ball, he, he, he needs to figure out where the nine ball's going and where the cue ball is going. It's one of those shots that it, you can end up frozen on the four ball, strangely, instead of on the four ball. Well, he kept the cue ball out of the pocket. And it looks like he's... I think he's got that off the rail for sure. Might have it straight away. Yeah. And no work to do for position, so he can really focus on just making the ball. Might even yeah. be going to get his short cue. Right? Yeah, I think he is. He's just going to gonna prefer to just jump the edge of the four ball instead of uh, going rail first. Because the cue ball is so close to the rail, it's difficult to judge the rail first. Because the contact point with the rail is so far away from the three ball. And he's already played a good jump shot. He didn't make his jump shot before, but he got very close. in that third rack. So he's favorite to make this. Makes it look easy. Perfect angle to come off one rail down by the six. Maybe even, maybe even longer and get all the way to the end rail, but that direction. fun as these guys dial in you can just see they got the table speed down he ended up too kind of too straight on this ball yeah and he may opt just to draw back and take the six ball a long way and there you go he's just standing behind that line right there That's interesting. To control his speed, he chose to go the longer route, and draw to the side rail, and bounce back out. More room for error, right? Small, small margin, yeah. It's really have to do much here except for make it with speed, and it should float right over to shoot the eight in the same pocket. All right, and uh, somebody asked about the bracket link. It is linked in our chat if you're watching on the Extreme channel. Really appreciate you guys uh, subscribing. Uh, like I said previous, um, we run our stream weekly and get ad revenue. We use all that ra ad revenue for our juniors program at the Mad Apple. And uh, we spread that money around. We sent some to Sam Henderson. Um, you know, we got our junior players we've done. It's 
So we appreciate all the subscriptions. That helps us uh, generate money for those guys too. So yeah, we do have a get over and subscribe. Very good junior program, the Mad Apple. All right, nice job there by Raga. Anton Raga is quite young himself. He's he's only twenty five years old. Yeah, from the Philippines. And his little replay of that, that little jump shot. Just jump over the edge of the four. I mean, it is kind of a re unique time in pool too, in the fact that you know the equipment has gotten so good, and like none of these guys, or a good portion of them, anyways, um, never had to play on bad equipment, except for the guys from the Philippines. I've seen some of the stuff they play on over there. <laughs> yeah, and if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, a lot of the new generation uh, people that have access to all this great equipment constantly. You know, just how how far they can take it. Let's see. I keep I keep suggesting it because I I want to get somebody to bite, but I think a total offense nine ball tournament would be no safety play. Now, what do you do when you run into a? Oh, you got to kick, try and make something. Just like the old bar bar rules days. Huh? Yeah. yeah be exciting with these guys you got such incredible shot makers they just don't shoot them because uh who wants to take the chance you know other guys are just going to save you can i ask a question about the all offense sure, yeah, ball? Yeah. so how would it work if uh, a player you know he's playing his offensive shot but he just like he misses. Well, right. I mean, obviously <laughs> there's going to be like two-way shots you yeah, know what yeah. i mean i missed uh, yeah, i wasn't right. playing safety yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's why bar rules doesn't work anymore. You have to pretend you don't know where the cue ball's going. It doesn't really make sense. Either. Well, all right. You get my point. It'd be fun. To Nine watch. ball ring games where you do have to go for, you do have to go for a shot. Yeah, I guess like chip tournaments. That's, I think that's what like you're that. thinking of because I know you grew up playing a lot of nine ball ring games, didn't you? Oh yeah. going on there yeah you don't want to try and get that table that's their table that that's just going to lag like crazy like that because it's trying to transfer over hopefully it doesn't make theirs lag it doesn't look like it did though one ball in the side wing ball in the corner cue ball narrowly misses scratching in the side he got both points of the side pocket there but he came out good. So I'm really surprised we haven't had to explain it more, but I'm going to explain it. This dual view, uh, our right-hand camera, is actually intentionally about two seconds behind uh, the main screen. And it's so you can watch the replay if you don't notice something or you want to see it again. Yeah, and we've been doing it ever since we started streaming at the Mad Apple. Um, and I've always said, I think everyone else is going to copy eventually. I haven't seen anyone do it yet. But I do think we're going to start seeing some of the other pool streams copying us and, and adding that second uh, overhead view. It's nice to be able to read the table, but you've always got that overhead view to look at. Well, yeah, yeah, and these four and three eighths pockets, you wouldn't didn't it, wouldn't really expect that ball to go in the way you hit that. Is he going to slide down front of the six? Set the six in the same pocket. Yeah, with the angle he's got on the six, he's not going to stay there for the seven in the side. Is he? He's got to come back out no, to the middle of the table. Same pocket.
think he just curls this back up to the table instead of trying to come across. Perfect shot. And Raga is going to take another one, take going up uh, five games to one. Yeah, it could be a new here now. Just have to have to have to have his fingers crossed, hoping that he gets a chance here. Well, Raga's only made one mistake, so. So over on our other stream, uh, which is over on the YouTube uh, for Mad Apple Extreme, we have uh, Lee Van Cort uh, Van Cortez. Uh, we got David Alcada, and he's uh, up right now, three to one. You now my brain, when I try and read those, it doesn't yeah. work. Lee, the same. Lee Van Cortez. Yeah, right. Anton Raga's countryman from the Philippines. The older generation and the new generation, all present. How many Americans are left in, do we know? Billy Thorpe, still going strong. Uh, he's also playing right now. He's 2-2. Two -two. Um... And of course, Shane Van Boning is on the uh, on the winner's side. He's already made it through to the the, the last sixteen. And you've got uh, for your side, you got Shaw. Anyone else? When you say my side, you know, Great Britain. Yeah, Jason Shaw. And of course, we're rooting for him because it's uh, it's his tournament. It's something to see the owner win, especially after all the work he put in. Yeah, Englishman uh, Imran Majid is playing right now he was down pretty strong the last time a little low. he looked where is it now all right he's so, coming back four or three right now yeah so he's down, he's, down he's, by one that's right to jose alberto delgado from spain Open you with the uh, push out here. Just giving him enough to see the edge. Yeah, and Billy Thorpe is tied up against uh, Alexa uh, Pelsletch. Pelsletch. Selch. And he was playing really well yesterday. Good safety there. Snugged him right tight to the four. Yeah, I think Raga's only really made an error once, and that was the uh, six ball. Yeah, and that and shot right there is really, you know, shows your, your class, doesn't it? It's hit, perfect hit speed. That, hit that so well, and Copini in trouble here. You know. And the speed, he's got to choose his speed here. I mean, there is a shot where you hit it soft and get behind the five, but that has to be hit so well. He may choose to hit it harder. He's gone oh, for this soft shot. shot. Look how good Look this is. Shot. That is absolutely brilliant. He, he picked that line oh, just, yeah. just perfect. It almost less than edge here, has he? This shot was just really, really well, well struck under pressure. With yeah, the, no, with if you the, look at the overhead, there, I don't think you can see that edge. I don't think. Yeah. 
Yeah, looks like he's looking at Thin Snick in this end and sending the queue around the table four rails around all the, all the obstacles, including Ask the Nine Ball here. Collided into those walls. Ah, plenty of room. Nice shot. I don't think he got rewarded. He's going to look, though. Maybe he did. It's the one that fools me every time looking at it. Looks like yeah. that's it. And it's obviously close because he's gone back to have another look. He's staring down that line and deciding. So that tells us it does go, but it's not a full pocket. When you're fighting the physics here, having the six on that side. Didn't quite get there. He's going to leave it open, too. So, hoping you're going to get a uh, good look at the table. Uh oh, we have a fly. So he's left himself an angle where he's really going to have to negotiate around the nine ball here. Probably just play a little bump into it. Problem with that is the five is not sitting open. You have a very specific spot to get. Well, he's going to be limited on but where he gets here for the four. Yeah, he's going to, if he st stops right there, if he uses the nine as a blocker and st stays pretty close to that, looks like he's digging down, actually. He might be trying to draw clear of the nine. Okay, no. Little f did negotiate a little bump forward, and he's okay there with that angle on the four. Well, this is where I'm saying this is the angle he ends up with, so you're either settling, taking that five, seven, not a great line to get to the top side of the five. Yeah, and so shooting the five seven combination, he should be able to control the five wall and bump it towards the other corner pocket. He's going to do that. I think he's just going to try and uh, draw this on the top side of the six. Yeah, I'm playing the draw shot allows him to get more angles closer to. Right, never mind. Look at this shot. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> I'm sure he was trying to hit the seven there. He's, he, he's even chuckling a little at that one because I don't think that came exactly the way he was looking at it. So a good smile there. That was an, that was an amazing shot. We'll take another look at that in a little bit. But for now, he has to roll this five ball. And make sure he doesn't hook himself behind the nine and the eight. Nicely controlled little brush on the eight ball. At least he hasn't frozen the eight on the nine. A 
again managing to keep the eight and nine out of play on that shot. It's tight here. It looks like he is just going to draw back. It must go past the nine in the side. Well, he might consider a kiss shot here. Yeah, I don't think so, but maybe. He did get further than he would have liked, so back cutting this past the nine. Yeah, got himself back, back in, back in control. There you go. To two he goes. Uh, down by three, breaking. If he can get the break rolling. There's that shot that he made to get on the five. So I'll give it a chuckle. Yeah, so let's look at that again. What was he? Yeah, go back one more. What line was he really taking here? Well, I think that was the line. It just was a little bit whippy. And he because the way the eight and the nine is, to... he doesn't really have any chance. Maybe he was trying to hit the seven. It would have been an incredible shot. Yeah. I think that's what he was laughing about as he kind of got outside and still got around that seven and came out perfect. Uh, how's our other stream looking? You got the scores up. Okay. Quick update on other matches going on right now. Mario He is up uh, six to two against Lo Ho Sum. We got Do the Kind is four two up against Daniel Gutenberg Berger. John Moore is tied up. Again, three three against Hai Chai Chen. One ball drains, and he's got a shot at the two. Yeah, so he's got to consider himself like fortunate that that one fell in. Didn't make the normal balls, as it were, the one in the side, all the all the wing ball. Got an unusual layout here with all the balls just strewn in this big long line. He was looking at the natural line of bumping into the three. And if you do bump into the three, you got to do it very gently. She did. So he's going to play this three in the side. He's going to, that line he's shown you there, you know, Glide off the edge of the eight ball and hopefully control the cue ball to the side rail and back out for the four. But he's got to negotiate this contact on the eight ball just right. I don't know if he's actually going to make contact on the eight. No, he just did. Yeah, he had no choice but just to glance it. He's got just enough angle here that he punched the, punched the cue ball sideways. But getting from the five to the six becomes a lot easier if you get the perfect angle on the five. He needs to get just past straight. Yeah, so this round is scheduled to conclude at uh, noon. And uh, that's when they're going to do the final 16 draw. So then we'll know what that bracket looks like. Do they redraw it? Um, or is it already diagrammed out? 
I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Well, Cole Ping Yi making quick work of this rack. And uh, lessening the gap by one again. Yeah, we just got confirmation. Yes, this, uh, this uh, last, the eight players that come through from these eight matches here, it will be redrawn. Not completely randomly, they're paired up one-to-one uh, -one with the eight players that are already so it's seated on the other side waiting the winner's side I'm not sure if it's seated I'm, or whether they're just going to do a random draw it random pair I see so none of the guys that made it through in this round will play each other. The Correct. First round, yeah, guess. everybody's going to be paired up with one of <clears throat> one of the gentlemen who are waiting on the winner side. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Carlo's in the top eight yet, right? Carlo. No, Carlo Biardo is uh, uh, is playing right now. He's up seven against Copin Yi's brother, Copin okay. Hun. So he is on the one loss. He's on the one loss side. Of course, once they make it to the last 16, it's, it reverts to a single elimination. And Carlos Biello just needs one more rack. Against Copin Hun. Copin Yi has his own problem here. Dealing with Anton Raga. So really if he's really gotta be looking here at some kind of thin cut safety. Yeah, we was no. trying to get behind the seven. Yeah. Short. And he knows that's not good. The problem is Anton has his choices here. All those balls down table to hide behind. Coping Yi couldn't find a way from that position to get down there. I think you're going to see Anton try to. He does have a bank here, and the three, yeah, ball, does, not three ball does cut. Sneak behind the five. Beautiful. Great shot. And Anton's played some really good safety shots. And that was that right there was a safety error from Copigny. And he finds himself in trouble. He's got a couple of different ways he can get through to hit this. One of which being a jump shot, which I think he's just run off to go get his, his jump gear. You know, going to the side rail and getting a good contact on the two doesn't seem to lead to anything other than selling out. This here also is going to be tough for him not to sell out. He wants to 
leave the cue ball up table and hopefully the two ball gets enough speed to go back down table. Tried to hold it right there. And yet again, Anton has an easier safety. I say that, and it looks like that two ball does go. He may just be shooting at this. Because if he can roll this two ball into the pocket, he's definitely got a chance to get on the three. There's a couple of small windows to get on here. He's going to get past the eight and, and the, one the five. He, that's the one he's going to choose there, yeah, down towards the bottom rail, underneath the five. He's got to make sure the cue ball doesn't hit the eight as he tries to get through here. Oh, okay. What are we talking? Yeah, so when he went down there, when we thought he was like looking at the three. He was probably just checking that those, you know, where those windows were. And he's managed to play a good safety there. Oh, what a nice shot. Perfect shot. Ends up behind the five. Yeah, he couldn't have done much more there, could he? Right, it's going to be two kick shots in a row. Couldn't hit that one much better. Measuring. Distance from the rail. Little mirror image. Kick system. And of course, he's aiming for a thin edge on this three ball. Not far away from missing the three ball completely. Hit that absolutely perfect. That's two brilliant one rail kick shots in a row. Yeah, push the four plenty of distance so he could control this next shot too. Well, he deliberately left himself that steep angle to make the position natural. We can just roll this in now. <laughs> Lots of options here. I think he's just going to slide over, shoot the seven up in the corner there. Oh. Feels like he's kind of on. No, oh, it's perfect. Oh, no, it is. Yeah, he's pretty straight. Stop shot. I mean, I think that's the biggest point takeaway is just always being on the right side of the ball and how crucial it is. Yeah. These guys, it's what these guys are so good at. They're yeah, just always given given a play, you know. Oh. Uh, yeah, they've got such such great speed control. Yeah, here's this other kick shot. He had two great ones, that long rail kick and then that uh, 
he's not phased, is he? Because Anton's put him under a lot of pressure here, and then you end up with tough shots there. Okay, so the uh, the players that are undefeated at the moment, they're already through to the last 16. Shane Van Boning, uh, Lee Ree Ten, Kopin Chung. So all three co-brothers are uh, still uh, still active right now, although Kopin Hun is in, in deep trouble in his match. Uh, Moritz Neuheisen from Germany. Uh, Wu, Wu Kun Lin. Uh, Nuki Oi from Japan. Chung Yu Lung. And homeboy Jason Shaw are the uh, already through to the last 16. Made it through undefeated. Yeah. What we're watching here is the winner's qualification for a chance to, to join those in the last 16. Yeah, no results yet. And it's race to nine. Mario, he is as close as he gets. He's 8-3 right now. Uh, to be the first into the qualifying round out of this bracket. And of course the pressure is on these referees to get these racks good. Job made a lot easier because of the magic racks. And it really does change the nature of the matches, doesn't it? Having those magic racks. So I suspect that we wouldn't be seeing everybody with the cut break uh, if the racks were traditional triangle racks, which just seem a little bit less predictable. One's gone, shape on the two. No real problems. And they'd like to string a few racks together here. Three comes up past the six, eight. Speed just gonna have a nice little stop shot to get to the four. This is uh, dot to dot. It's almost a bunch of stop shots at this point. See how little he moves the cue ball here in the last. Yeah, it looks like he he's planning on just bringing it back an inch or a couple of inches. Yeah, you're just not going to see much movement. This run is set up uh, about as perfect as he can get it. And this similar to the last, you may just back it up in a couple of inches. Yeah, there just won't be any just rails again. involved here, I think. Yeah, get nice and straight on the five.
Yeah, drifting down nicely for the nine ball. And Copian Yi levels this match up. We didn't know at the first of this match if Anton Raga was just going to run away with it. He did make a mistake. He had a, that one shot that he missed. Well, I mean, the one thing, it, it doesn't matter in these matches. You could have a guy up eight games to zero and you could still end up in a... Any one of these guys are capable of not taking nine racks in a row, keeping control for that long, you know. And Lee Van Cortezer is up six to three against David Alcady. Well, he had that, another perfect break hit, but he's got unlucky there. It looks like the six ball is now not, not giving him a shot on the two. So he's called a push. Now, where do you push it to? To not give Anton Raga an advantage here. The two ball does not go past the eight. It does have a shot on the two into the, the right-hand corner pocket. And he has a safety where he could just shoot the two straight up and down, back down the table and get it to rest somewhere near the three ball. But he's really looking for something more aggressive than that. He needs he needs to find a snooker here. If he just doesn't want to hand uh, control back to Copigny. Yep, and after a good old look, Anton said, you know what, I don't see how to how to gain an advantage here. Maybe uh, Copigny can teach you something. And yeah, he's pointed to that same spot. So it looks like he is just trying to get the two ball straight up and down table. Yeah, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with one of our cameras, so we had to switch up our uh, traditional end view here. But we'll get that fixed by next match. That is the shot that Anton was considering. And uh, Copigny has showed him perfect execution of it. Uh, Anton's got his jump cue out. And wishes he could have played that shot himself. So he's got a real good chance to hit the two ball, but... How do you leave it safe? Yeah, he's going to lose. So. He's open enough for uh, 
hoping you to have a choice here. I'm sure if it goes past. Yeah, both players have had a good old look at that. See if it goes past the eight. Well, and even if it did, hit back here for the three ball is going to be a task in itself. Another safety similar to the last one. Looks like I think he left the edge. Yeah, he's going for his jump cue. I think he's trying to hit the right hand side of the two, not not the center of the two here. And he's gone back for his regular shooting cue. Looks like he's getting a little bending mass A shot and ends up with a really good safety. What a great shot that was. Perfect speed, yeah. Yeah, he'd been looking at the jump shot and then he realized he's just bend it a little bit, get behind the six ball. And Copini is going for his jump cue now. We got a score update of any type here while we're... And that was Anton's little Mass A safety shot, which put Copigny in this, in this spot. A little bit straight. Yeah, if it had a hair more angle, it'd have made it and got on the three. So the first match to conclude today is uh, Carlo Biardo is through to the last 16. I don't know if Copinu is paying attention, but his brother Copin Han just got knocked out. But he's got his own. Uh, he's he's got his own problems to worry about at the moment. So he looks like playing a loopy draw shot here. With perfect speed isn't required to get on the three. Yeah, there you go, he's drawing around the pink four, hit the side rail. Still needs a little bit of spin to kick down, so he's not hooked on the three. And he got the cue ball he there. He did, and that helped him get safe, whether he was thinking that, that, about that or not. Um, he got the second prize there. Coping you again. Total eclipse of the two ball.
Yeah, so he looks at a couple of options there. Kicking around behind it, but he's opted to. He wants to jump over the five. It's still going to be a one rail kick after he jumps, and he's showing you right there where he wants to hit it. Taking the little handle off his jump cue because this is an extreme angle that he needs to elevate the cue through. He's so close to the five. Got over, got a kick, and they're going to get safe, I think. Well, didn't quite roll far enough to hook him, but... Uh, well, it's enough to keep him alive in this rack. Yeah. Good hit. But Anton's been playing, showing that he plays safety so good that... Copenhagen's probably expecting to be in trouble again here. Coping, he is going to get a clean shot at the two wall. Yeah. Two balls hung out for a while here. Should have a shot count on this one because it's been quite a few. Yeah, and he played a shot similar to that earlier and, and got it wrong, as he did that time. Yeah, and he really put it in an ideal spot. At that speed on that cue wall, had no, ch no chance of hiding behind the eight. I don't know what they're looking for. Clean the cue ball, maybe? Raph using a piece of chalk to mark the spot. Yeah, and all the refs are armed with these little teal colored microfiber cloths. Sure, he has to kind of. He can't really get up on the three, so he's just got to drift across and end up close to the six ball. Oh, he's hit that absolutely perfect. That's as good as you could possibly do that. Try to just come straight down the line drawn on the table here. a little bit longer here he's going to more than likely roll forward could go around the six but you get in trouble Ted trying to do that sometimes Yep, just choosing whether he's going to shoot the nine ball the long way, which I think is what he's going to do. I got to going to break the tie here. Took a huge lead. Copenhagen has come back and. Uh, Oh, Anton's back in control. So England's Imran Majid 
Knocked Out by Jose Alberto Delgado. That's two Englishmen in a row that Jose has knocked out. I put out Darren Appleton last night. Billy Thorpe is just one game up, 5-4, uh, against Alexa Peggy. Mario, he put on the final game against uh, Loham's Loho Sum, uh, 9-4. John Moore has got his back up against the wall, and you can actually see him shooting in the background of the shot there. He is down 3-8 to eight against HJ Chen. Boy, I saw him kick at that ball and just rattled it in the jaws. Well, do you like it here? Go for the quick win. I think it's pretty tough to resist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a gimme, um, but neither is the two ball. Cutting it the other way. And so out of the two, I probably do prefer the, uh, the kiss shot on the nine. Just went around to look at it. So he is playing the nine ball here, I think. Oh, look at that. He's looking around, walking around, looking at the three ball. Well, I mean, like you say, it's no gimme on the nine, so. It doesn't seem any tougher than the, uh, the thin cut on the two. This is considering banking the two. If he does go for the nine, so he's, he can play it in a, way, in a way that there is no shot on the two afterwards. There's an element of safety. Just don't know if he can hit it soft enough to control it. I think he's got to let it go if he's going to slide over because the two's so far. Yeah, and the cue oh. ball is kind of not in the best place for this kiss shot. This would have to be a sort of a hit it with speed and a little bit of draw back to it, I think. Otherwise, you just don't have enough speed in the cue ball. Right. And so, yeah, he's going around looking at the, th at the three again. Looks like he's planning on running out. Which means he's got to dance the cue ball around the back of the nine to get on the three. Cutting the two ball to the le left pocket. And if you don't like either of those, he definitely has safety options. He's, he's, but you can see him. He's, he's just gonna, back and forth between the options. Yeah, he's got to figure out which he likes best. Neither is great. He's know. not going to shoot unless he unless he feels it. Neither is great, but I think one of them can let you win. And you got a chance to still hook him, luckily. You'd be you'd be playing the nine, no doubt. Not Anton. He's got, he didn't. He yeah, didn't like him. Like those offensive options. I mean, it's probably way smarter. Well, than any of it. Except if you'd succeeded in any any one of those, you would have kept Copini away from the table. Yeah, right. You're not guaranteed to come out good with Copini kicking or jumping. Copini, of course, world champion, multiple times, nine ball and ten ball. Yeah, you're for sure in the in the right spot if you've got him sitting at the side. Because <laughs> he can uh, catch fire. 
You got in three rails here, is he? Two. Oh, and he scratched. Well, that's unlucky. He's probably had a chance to, for that to end up safe. And Tom Raga's decision there, paying off. And it looks like the two, the three, the four goes past the nine. Which means he just needs to... Get straight on the three, so he can draw back a little bit to get on the four. Of course, the four-seven combination yeah, not is not, either, not the yeah. end of the world either. And we'll see which way he chooses by what angle he gets on the three. Oh, he has given himself an angle, so he is plan planning on playing the combination. All right, our YouTube uh, Mad Apple Extreme wrapped up. Uh, I don't know what the final score was, I guess. Oh, on table two over there? Yeah. What was the final of this? No. What was the final? Lee, uh, Lee Van Carteza took... Uh, 9-4 in that match. So into the final 16. So a strong Filipino contingent here with Carlo Biado, Lee Van Corteza, and Anton Raga coming on strong here. And Anton's a, a, a quick player. He's not afraid to stop and think when he has to, but when he when he's in the clear here, he doesn't take too much time. One closer, put some two away from the win. Still got to keep. Just never lose control. These guys. Uh, Anybody's capable, so. I'm still waiting for our 9-0 match to come up. Somebody's going to snap it off. Yeah, with the tables breaking the way they are uh, in this tournament, you would expect some large runs. Just two games away now. Oh, and that time the one ball managed just not to go in. Wide open, too. Exactly what you don't want to yeah, do. Yeah, you can see he's not happy with that. He's been making the one in the side almost every time. And there's a lot more to this match yet.
Kobe knee. He was just looking down the the tangent line there, which heads towards the seven ball. It's a little bit of a touchy shot. Would have to get the roll. Got a couple of nudges that weren't planned. And he ended up okay, yeah, and he apologizes. They apologize for any little bit of luck, don't they, these days? Yeah, it's way different some days. <laughs> he was trying to just go through the gap. There was a small gap here. I think he wanted to miss the eight and the seven. And he's ended up reasonably on the two. The three ball's not far away from the its pocket at the other corner of the table. Should just be able to pop out here past the six. And he's forced into hitting the top of the ball here. Yeah, that was fairly natural, wasn't it? He's going to make sure he hits this soft enough that he doesn't drift behind the five. And the five ball's got several pockets, so. Check your settings, Alexander. Perhaps there's extension. He's going to swing around through the middle of the table and play the five in the same pocket. Gave that a little bit more than he wanted. Still okay, though. And these two balls he's going to play in the same pocket too. A little straighter than he would have liked on that shot. Yeah, and it looks like he's slightly short of straight, which is kind of an awkward side to be on. Looks like he may be coming back for the side pocket here. A big draw to the end rail. Big draw shot. Landed on the spot there. Cue ball took a little turn as it brushed down the edge of the spot. Okay, back in control. Six games to seven. Copany. And he looks so calm, doesn't he? On the break. Alrighty, just update on uh, other matches. Yeah, Mario, he did make it through and put out Loho some. Um, John Mora still going. Actually, he's, he's five to eight down in the background there against the uh, Ho Chad Chen. And Billy Thorpe is ahead uh, in his match, 7 4, against uh, Alexa. 
Pecci. And as we said, Levi and Cortez are already through. Uh, knocked out David Alcady. Now, the reason uh, Copigny got that chance to win that last rack is because the one ball did, didn't go in. Okay, oh, back, there. back to normal. And two's going to hold up, so he'll have a shot. This gives uh, Copigny a really good chance to draw level. First shot here is the tester. Pump the two ball in. Make sure you're not hidden behind this big wall of balls in the middle of the table. I was going to say, even if you're only out to where the two ball is sitting now, it's not a horrible shot to take on that three ball. And that's it. You've got these two windows, one close to where the two ball is now and one close to where the cue ball is now. So I'm sure he's going to just push this over to the side rail and try and come up table a little bit. No, he's digging down on the ball, which, yep. which tells us he may be come, trying to get across. Yeah, he's going back, to bring the cue ball back to where it is. Just like that. Oh, and that's the way to take the group out of play, isn't it? Get underneath Yeah, them. look at the... I say, I say take the group of out of play. Somehow the nine ball's still in play. And that's pretty unlucky. And he's already played... He played two really good kick shots in a row earlier in this match. So he's got the rails figured out. And this ball either has to go in. Or catch a thinner hit and get the cue ball up table for a safety oh look at that shot another perfect kick shot does he miss the kick brilliant no I think every kick he shot he's put in and hit with good speed to come out Incredible kick shot. Great recovery. Oh. And that one drifting wide. Big miss, that. Yeah, you're going to set uh, Raga up to take the hill here. He played that brilliant kick shot recovery to give him a chance. And he could have drawn level, but now he's giving Raga a chance to get to the hill. And it goes through the window into the side pocket between the eight and seven, he tells us. Well, use a couple of extra rails to get there. Long way around, yeah.
Okay, Raga going to take this to the hill. <coughs> and he looks younger than he is. I mean, 25 is young. He looks younger than that. But when you see him play, he's, he's a relentless warrior. A very seasoned player, obviously. And he's got no fear. Playing against former world champion Copin Yi. And John Moore's opponent in that table right behind in the shot there, right underneath the Cyberts logo is uh, one rack away from putting out John Mora. Looks like he's run out a little bit out of position there. Um, Anton planning and breaking and running this set out. But again. Nine ball almost went. Dry, yeah, one ball almost went also. Dry break. This match is definitely not over. Copinia gets a, gets another chance. Ball, ball's wide open. He's got to figure out what to do with the one ball here. He's really got to play some kind of constructive safety. And that's the one thing in this match so far that he hasn't really been perfect at is his safeties. Let's hurt him. He gave up a couple of shots um, trying to get him safe. He's been brilliant at kicking his way back out of safeties. Yeah. So he's either going to chip the one ball back down table towards where he is or and hit it and get the cue ball down there. It's going to be the one ball. And the cue ball this time. I think he got it. I think he hit it just soft enough. So he, Anton does have the edge on this one ball. And it's, it's not that easy to find a ball to hide behind. And he's thinking about thin hitting off, off the one and getting behind the five, which is a really tricky small little window to get into. Oh, and he's playing a little. He does have to bend this a little bit, so the two balls... Taking that edge out. He's made oh. the one and the cue ball. We'll get a replay on that shot in a minute. Try and figure out if he was actually shooting the one ball. Yeah, I mean, I think he was trying to mess that ball in. Well, that's just what Copin you needed. It's ball in hand to start off on this rack where no two balls are together. And what's that silly phrase they always use? A road map. Yeah, I mean, it is too, though. Yeah, Anton has had a couple of dry breaks. Uh, nothing going. I think uh, all week, or all weekend so far, I think I've only seen him 
missed maybe a half a dozen times on the break. Bell definitely figured that out quick. And John Moore breaking in the back there means he's uh, he, his opponent's still on the hill, but John's not like, not going to let him take that last rack. It's like in golf, you know, clean the ball just to improve your life, just that. Well, I don't think he's quite happy with uh, that cue ball didn't go exactly where he wanted it. And so he, might, he feels he got some something weird happened. Maybe got got a heavy contact. He's giving himself a little bit more angle on this six than he was planning. You're saying in golf that they have the ball clean to actually change its position a little bit or change the way it's oh, sitting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fluff it. And I'm sure that's not what Kofi Nye was doing, but... Uh... That's an interesting shot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Takes you think you're on the wrong side, but it's actually the right side if it's long enough. Yeah, and these great players, they don't think twice about using extra rails or more speed or play a shot that the lower divisions would, wouldn't consider. Just to get the... Get, Get better, get better position. Now in the background, you see, you see in the blue shirt that Shane Van Boning. He's just practicing at the moment. He doesn't play till later because he's on the uh, undefeated side. I'll tell you, Raga started this match out uh, five games to one. I think it was. Yeah, it was the biggest lead. Yeah, coping. You stayed very cool the whole time. You never know when you when your next chance is coming, but when it does, you've got to do something clever and make the most of it. Oh, what do you predict, MH? Wow, it's so unpredictable. I think he's going to run these last two. He's going to put her, pull her together, get a get a get a shot. That's uh, definitely definitely not unimaginable. He's got to figure out the difference between why on the brakes he didn't make the one in the side. What happened? There you go. One in the side. Corner ball. Two ball going to come out. Wing ball goes. He's three taking, seven giving him a challenge. He's taking a good it. old look to see if the three ball goes. Yeah, that because the three ball's frozen on the rail, if it doesn't go past the seven, it's a pretty tricky either combination or kiss shot. Both of those are sort of really difficult. Have to be hit perfect. From any the, angle, yeah. Yeah, because the three ball is looks like it's frozen on the rail. That makes the kiss shot almost impossible with a with a double kiss. Jumping in the way. It, that three ball may just go. Well, 
well, he's got as good as he could on it, and that tells you there is a space through the seven. And he doesn't have to do much with the cue ball right there. Okay, draw back a fraction. Get straight on the five in the side. All focus has to be striking this three ball accurately. It's one of those situations where you'd like to go take one of the other balls and just measure it, see if it fits, but you can't do that. That would be a foul. Oh, he did hit the seven. <laughs> he and honestly, he rolled a little further. He wasn't trying it's, to come back that far. But I have to imagine hitting the seven and it's still going. But uh, it's messed up his position completely. And uh, what happened to the cue ball while we were watching that? He drew back. We'll take another look at that in a little while. How did he end up with this shot on the, on the five ball? That's super tight. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine that he really tried to play for this shot when he was lining up and was very close to just uh, five in the side pocket. Was... He was already there. Yeah, that, that shot was <laughs> pretty thin in there. I think it, he thought he was stopping for the side. I don't think he really was playing this corner pocket. It's tough to imagine someone of his class and caliber. Even if you don't have this, maybe you try and play that bank. Yeah, and that might be what you're thinking. I mean, it's a, it's a straighter shot, isn't it? The bank shot. He doesn't like this. Great camera angle here watching him shoot this. Yeah, he's coming off the off the edge of the five. It looks like he's looks like he's cutting this into the other side pocket. Yes he did. Oh. What a shot. Brushed both points. But the billiards gods are not gonna let him out yet. I'm going to come with another one now, Copigny, if you want to stay in this match and in this tournament. He knows he cannot turn over this rack to, to Anton Raga. He can play a, safety coming. a super thin, yeah, safety and just leave the six ball up there. He does have a chance to bank the six, which I know there's a lot of players here who might just be banking this because the cue ball then goes around the around the table for the seven. Oh, did no. he just miss that ball completely? He yeah. did. Oh, and he stopped that, it. And that is probably the match, and he knows it. It's the first time I've seen his expression change on his face. Yeah. I mean, went to just really thin it. That's pretty thin. And as soft as he hit that cue ball, you know he was playing an extremely thin hit. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't want to hit almost any of that. Yeah, six ball would have barely moved. That's going to end things here. That was too He's straight. ended up <laughs> actually freezing to the end rail, which is the one spot. See he's not frozen completely, but he's really close. He's going to be okay, though. I'm still betting, oh, yeah. up, betting on him getting out here. And the seven ball looks even closer to the rail than the, than the cue ball. It's like somebody giving you a piece of candy and they throw it back at him. Yeah. End up that straight. Anywhere but right there. As you say, I don't, th I don't think he's going to struggle to still finish this match out, but sure makes it a lot more interesting. Well, and it looks like at least when I saw that shot, it looked like the cue ball did bounce fractionally off the rail, which does make a big difference here. 
because if you try to play any kind of draw shot, if the cue ball's frozen to the rail, you catch the underside of the rail and uh, yes. <laughs> and it goes all wrong. But uh, and from there, it actually looks like they both have a slight gap. Yeah, I mean, Which anything you play there. here is not super easy, is it? Looking at from that other, you can just see it's just like out of all the spots, right. you know. Because you really can't get off the rail, can you? I mean, but honestly, well, he can, could, yeah. he could just follow forward and then leave the cue ball right in the corner pocket here, the same pocket that he shoots the seven into, and from there he's got to cut on the eight in the side. I think that's what he's going to do. He's just going to roll forward, end up really close to the corner pocket. Played the rail. He's a maximized, bit yeah, maximized this dif distance off the rail as good as he can there. And he's going to wipe down his cue. He doesn't want anything weird happening here. But as good as he's been playing in this match, you'd favor him to make this shot. No problem. But it's not a gimme. And he's got to control the cue ball too. So he's got to hit this the right speed. Figure out which side of the nine ball he's going. There it is. Heart of the pocket. Nice speed off the rail. Or is it? Most interesting last three well, balls in, in history here. Yeah, why does it always get so difficult towards the end? <laughs> now that these guys are making this look easy. Yeah. So he's got a bank shot here to put Coping Yi out and make it through. Yeah. He's got to calm himself down and stop smiling first. Yep. Uh... And again, he's also a very, very calm player, isn't he? He doesn't show much emotion. Uh, except for right now. This is your moment of zen. All right, puts it all beside him, no puts problem. the nine down, takes uh, takes the match. Uh, so Ko Pin Yi out of the tournament, and uh, we have Anton Raga going to move on to the final <laughs> he's gonna, 16. He's going to replay this shot and yeah. show you how he was supposed to do it. Further away, zing. Yeah, nice I mean, it is different out of the situation, you know. It's, you get ball in hand on the six, you miss your second ball, I'm sure you're not. Well, you and know. they were so straight, it, you can see this one going wrong and just following straight into the corner pocket. Yeah, it, Next time you play it that way. So, quick recap on these uh, qualification round. Lee Van Cortez is through. Jose Alberto Delgado from Spain is through. Carlo Biado from the Philippines is through. 8-8 eight, eight there. John, John Moore. Moore. Yeah. And you can see right behind you in that, I don't wonder if we can, that that table behind us where John Moore has been playing, I don't know if our stats are updated. Is that match over? We're seeing it at 8-8, eight, eight, both on the hill. The cues are still on the rack, so maybe they're just taking a little break before the last rack. Well, I think uh, that match might be over. Do the climb from... Uh, uh, China is through. Uh, Anton Raga just made it through, as we just saw there, and Mario he, he Those are the players that have made it through to the last 16 and now are going to join the other eight who have been waiting for them. Those other eight being Shane Van Boning, Ru Li Tang, Ko Pin Chung, Moritz Neuhausen, Wu Kun Lin, Niyuki Oi from Japan, Chang Yu Lang, and last but by no means least, Jason Shaw, owner and proprietor of US One Billiards in Connecticut, where this wonderful event is happening. And so we'll be back with you as soon as uh, the action starts back up again. Stay tuned. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. I'm sorry, noon. Noon. Okay, yeah, it's noon. They're going to do a, draw, a redraw and figure out what the pairings are for these last uh, the last 16 we'll see you soon
All right, so for everybody watching, this is Hill Hill over here on Billy Thorpe's match. This is to get into the final 16, last match to go.
Greetings, Earthlings and pool fans. Welcome back to Q Lee's Connecticut Nine Ball Open. Uh, we are at US One Billiards, Jason Shaw's Pool Hall, and we are down to the last 16. This is MH Potting Penglays, and I am joined in the comedy box with special guest Imran Majid, Moscone Cup player. Imran, thank you for being here. Hello, guys. Uh, an absolute pleasure to be in the booth with you. And uh, I'm not sure if I should call you the Maharaja. Is that what they call you? That's what they called me, yeah. And that, um, the meaning is Indian king, yeah. Right. They say I'm the best Indian player in the world. So I bet that's true. <laughs> Who knows? Do you like that name? Um, I'm indifferent, yeah. They've given it to you. Okay, so here, here we go. First rack. Uh, it's bumped up to a race to 10 now. This is a single elimination format. And we have Shane Van Burning against Lee Van Cortesa. And Shane crunches them as usual. <clears throat> He's got a pretty nice shot on the two, and the three's laying handy. So he can just bump into the five here and hold for the two. And there's going to be, I mean, the, these tables with this magic rack, they've been breaking. Everybody's playing the same break. It's all the cut break, isn't it, nowadays? Uh, yeah, with well. this new matchroom format, players are trying to get the one ball in the side, and uh, any other ball is a, is a bonus. So, yeah, the one ball is the, the ball you're trying to get in the side. And that being the case... You can. It's not un, unimaginable that someone's just going to break and run the whole set out. Oh, it can happen. There's been a six pack, a seven pack in this tournament. Um, yeah, it's easily done. Yeah. Shane's a bit unlucky there that the five balls come and uh, blocked his path for the four ball in the top pocket. So he has to manufacture a position here. Played that very well. Wow. Had to cheat the pocket there to move the cue ball. In pretty much perfect position you can uh, just roll this in touch of inside maybe or does he nudge it out he nudges yeah, it out I'm okay gonna bump it there yeah did that well chains coming from the undefeated side but now they made it to the last 16 it's it's a it's a wash isn't it it's a fresh start single elimination that's right. Most uh, players uh, treat uh, a tournament of this nature like two tournaments. Uh, first, you want to make the cut. That's your first tournament. And then final 16 is a separate tournament. That's the, the mentality you have. Mm, Shane, pretty clinical. Taking the first rack. Captain America. Captain America. That's I'm awful. the one who actually made that name for Shane. Did Captain you? America, mm -hmm. yeah. It was in the World Nine Ball Championship. He was playing Copen Yi in the final. Uh -huh. I can't remember the year, about six or seven years ago. I was commentating with Ted Lerner. Mm -hmm. And I come up with that name and it, it stuck with him. Captain it's America is yeah. perfect. I had another one, the American Express. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But actually, I think Captain America should be Jeremy Jones now because he's captain for the Moscone. Because he is the captain. Yeah. And SVB should be the American Express. I feel like the Captain America will stick for Shane probably yeah, more. I yeah, think that's a, yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a catchy. That's a good that's one, good. yeah. Because mm -hmm. he really is. I mean, America's got a lot of good players, but Shane just is continuing to be sort of the number one he's a cut above the rest yeah gotta say he works harder doesn't he yeah whenever you see him he's hitting balls practicing and missed the one ball in the side but made balls anyway he does seem to be hitting that that break harder yeah he hits them harder than anybody else on the circuit um he does lose the cue ball a lot uh, he does um um come up dry sometimes but um most of the time, he gets a shot after the break. 
you know, for example, this break, he he didn't hit him great. He didn't make the one. He just made he hits the balls with so much force that a ball's gonna go in somewhere. Yeah, and no, so some of these guys are hitting this this cut break pretty soft, really. I mean, it's not not super soft like some of those other wing ball soft breaks. Uh, but yeah, they're not they're not really trying to crunch it at all, and it's it's just make the one in the side. You don't need to. But some players are not even using a break cue now because you you have more control with your playing yeah. cue when you're breaking. Yeah, and that makes sense. And you are spinning the ball. It's not a plain ball, send a ball hit, is it? Um, well, there's two or three different types. Some people play with English. Some players play center ball. There's no one given way to hit this break. And so what, some people are drawing sideways to the to the side rail or possibly let it go forward? Everyone's drawing to the side rail because okay. you have to cut the balls to make the one in the side. Yeah. Left hand spin, 11 o'clock on the cue ball, floats around two rails, catches the third one. Yeah, that would do nicely. You just pop the ball. Nothing else to worry about here. I got to say the equipment is lovely. Yeah. Yeah, and they just got those set up. Um, we were setting up the streaming equipment the day before, and uh, they only just got all the pool tables put back together and the cloth on. All these tables are new. Um, so they used to have uh, Brunswick gold crowns here. They got rid of all of them and put these uh, uh, these nice new Rasson tables. Yeah, and aesthetically pleasing. They as are. Well. Everybody's yeah. talking about, it. and of course, with, with the magic rack, it's not quite as advantageous. But the uh, the way the balls fall through to the and actually sit right in the triangle that you see me pulling them out there. But uh, if you're using the regular triangle, you it the balls are already in it. Pull them out. Interesting thing about the rack down there is he's pulling the balls out like a few at a time. You can actually lift that whole tray up yeah. and then slide the rack out. It's really kind of ingenious. Yeah, well done to Rasson. Yeah, nice tables. Pleasure to play on. Captain America, rack number three. He is leading 2-0. So the players are trying to make the one in the side and, and, and track the cue ball towards the nine ball to try and make that as well. So they are trying to trying yeah. to make the nine, yeah, because the nine ball counts, doesn't it? Yeah, so Shane tried it there. He was pretty close. You've sort of got almost as much chance of getting a collision and making the cue ball as you do the, the nine ball, don't, don't you find? Trying to crunch through the through the middle of the rack. It's a sort of a risk, a risky. Seems like a risky thing. I mean, that's the nature of this break, isn't it? Though the cue ball has to have have speed on it. Yeah, I mean, um, a lot of the players say it's better than the last breaking format. This is um, less predictable. Right. <clears throat> the last breaking format where the the wing ball was wired and some people getting the one ball as well and a couple of other balls you weren't actually playing nine balls more like five or six balls. sure and then you saw some really soft breaks and there was just no yeah. need if you if you're that sure about making your the wing ball you uh, know you play a controlled why hit it hard because you can control the cue ball as well kick and stick here uh -oh. oh he didn't catch that right but he just survived he's got it safe Yeah, and the game has to, you've got these great players here. The game has to, and the, the equipment has to test the players. Yeah, I thought he might play the bank. Good try. Oh, Shane's face with a horrible shot here. I don't think you can see all of the cue ball. I don't think you can get to all of the cue ball. Maybe the right-hand side, so some low right with some deep draw 
Failing that, it could play rail first and go around the angles. Yeah. It's a tricky just make position. Sure you or you could just make the ball and play safe. Yeah, rail first. Yeah, he's hit this pretty good. He's going to have a shot. Yeah, nicely yeah, done. Yeah, and he played for that window, didn't he? Because yeah. he's mm -hmm. in danger of going behind the, the full ball there. Um, he's queuing with low here. Maybe he's trying to go into the four to to hold position. Yeah. Yeah. Now what? Bank shot on the four. Yeah, I don't think he's going to refuse this. Yep. Overdrew that slightly. This is quite a responsive cloth, so you've got to make sure you your touch plays in the in sync. And would you say that the pockets are playing tightish, or how are they? they uh, well, it's a, it's a new cloth, so they're always going to play pretty generous. Yeah, slides in off the. Off I mean, if you brush the rail. Yeah, even at the matchroom events. Um, Obviously, the new class and the the four-inch pockets, but uh, they still play pretty generous t for the first few days. Is that how small they are? Four-inch? Yeah. Wow, that is tiny. These are four and three eighths. Um, he's a bit out of line here. He's got to come with a good shot here. Shane does. Not sure if he can miss the scratch. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, good shot it was. Captain America flies out into 3-0 lead. And Lee Van Cortesa watching, waiting, hoping to get a chance. Yeah, that's all you can do when you're in your seat. Um, just... Try and prepare yourself mentally for the chance you get, if you get one. I was a spectator in a match yesterday. I was playing a guy from um, Chinese Taipei, Ri Teng or something, and mm -hmm. uh, he kept me in my seat, yeah, five or six racks, yeah. Yep. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, you become a spectator, yeah. right? Yeah, and you narrowly missed the cut to the last 16. Yeah, yeah, disappointing in my match this morning. I scratched three times, and you can't do that on a race to nine. Off the break, obviously, and the yeah. Kubel's got kicked in three times. Mm, that's the way it goes. And there is random random luck comes into it, and that's... Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah fine margins at this level. You had a good uh, match against Niels? Yeah, I beat Niels yesterday. Yeah, it was a pretty good match. And that one went hill hill, I think, did it? No, nine seven. I nine seven. Yeah. yeah. It was a pretty um, <clears throat> clever shot because he actually went for the bank, I think. Yeah. Wow. That would have been an amazing bank, yeah, because he got... Yeah, two-rail bank, because he's on the two-ball, and he'll be safe if he missed it. Yeah, almost. And I, it looks like he might have... Has he has he hooked him there, do you think? I think he's hooked, but um, it's not too hard of a swerve, a little masse around the six-ball. Yeah, ball. of course, that's not the not, not the whole problem, is it? It's not going to do any good No, if he, leave the cue wall up there. Yeah. Um, You're almost better off one rail kicking it yeah, with speed he, to come, he's, come he's, out. But. He's got a hopeful position here. He said it too thick. Yeah, way too thick. Really tough to imagine how he would have had any chance of getting on the, on the two ball there. Yeah, probably had to slide in between the, the rail and the nine and go take that route. <clears throat> It's not a given this rack because the eight's in a tricky position. He might have to play an eight nine combo.
Yeah. Three, four, five, six lay pretty good. So he'll be thinking about the eight ball. He'll already have that in mind. And with the six there, though, yeah, is there a chance to do something else other than the combo? Yeah, if he gets a good angle on the six, he could maybe bump it out. Or play play Just short side it. position on yeah. the eight, you know. He'll have some options. Yeah, it all depends on how good you feel about that that combination. It's it's not exactly straight. But it's, it's, but it's pretty not that durable, terrible. though. Yeah. yeah. He's just working it out now. Pro players like to think think at least three shots ahead. Well, I'm sure he's thinking about that. Whether to shoot that combination right from the right from the start, wasn't he? Yeah, probably. <clears throat> yeah, he's perfect. Just roll this in and play the combo. If you, unless the eight ball goes, it might just slide in off the rail. Wow. It doesn't look like it from this uh, camera angle. No, he's playing the combo, yeah. You've got to air on the, the thin side here. Aim to hit the nine towards the long rail. It goes clean in, yep, 4-0. Yeah, and we haven't see, seen much of Lee Van Cortese yet. <clears throat> the clinic from Shane. No, and we might not see him shoot. That's uh, the nature of this beast. Yeah, Shane is the number two ranked player in the world at the moment. And that doesn't really mean anything, because if Lee Van Cortese gets a chance, he may just run out the rest of the set. I think you never know what's going to happen. But with the tables breaking as nicely as they are, they you, are you, breaking it beautifully. sort of lends itself to <clears throat> that kind of possibility. Mm -hmm. And it really is, like you say, the random part is, is the cue ball. He can control it to the side rail here, but there's there's random collisions, and there you go. He didn't scratch. But uh, he, he always seems got. to get a shot, which is um, massive. Yeah, and that's a this is a beautiful little layout. And I mean, the two ball didn't have to land there, right? Right, and the he always, ball didn't have to land. It was almost in the pocket, and that would have completely yeah. changed the, changed the match. But I don't suppose Lee Van Cortez expects to get a shot this rack either. No, he won't be sat in his chair. He's thinking, okay, five nil. And it's tough to keep yourself mentally ready, isn't it? Because you, I don't know what you what he's thinking in his chair, but he's not feeling that great about sitting there watching. And then all of a sudden, in a minute, he's going to be up with some kind of weird problem that he's got to solve. Well, knowing Lee Van, he's not going to get flustered. He's uh, been around the block, you know. He's been in this situation thousands of times, so he'll stay within himself and just. Um, pounce when yeah. he gets a chance a four pack is quite standard on in this tournament I've seen yeah I've seen quite a few of them already yeah yeah most players <clears throat> by this um time in the, in the tournament down to the last 16 would have had at least two or three four packs well Shane Van Boning halfway to his goal and Lee Van Cortez has not yet left the starting block it's a great warm up for the US Open this tournament yeah and of course, that's it's why all the players are in town. That's why you're in town. Absolutely. It's a very strong field and you're, uh, you're playing against the world's best. So uh, you can't get better practice than that. You're looking at this tournament as your, your warm up. That's right. Yep. 
get into the grease, you know, and it's a feel, huge feel a bit of pressure. Yeah, and it's a huge field, isn't it, in the uh, the US Open? Yeah, it's a massive field, yeah. Pretty much all these players, plus a, a lot more. And this one here is a 64-player field. One ball straight in, nine ball, yeah, there oh. you go. Thanks for coming. Well, six nil. What do you think about the nine ball break? I mean, I guess if they are playing it, it is a skill, and you, you there is a skill, yeah. He's, it. Let's he's been practicing it, yeah. For, for... We've got the replay here. See how yeah, that nine so, ball makes it in. So that's the perfect. Yeah, it was sitting right yeah, there, yeah. and it gets waxed, just yeah. like you said. Was that the cue ball that hit it? Yes, the cue ball. Yeah, that's so that's to do. The... so that's exactly what he was playing. Yeah. Bring the cue ball across to the side. And go into the nine. You and either make it into the corner into the or the ball. side pocket. Yeah. Because the nine ball doesn't move, does it? These no. balls are racked so good. You do have a chance of scratching the old whitey, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. what I was wondering. I mean, it's almost fifty-fifty, isn't it, yeah. on that shot? Yeah, but you know, you take a, a gamble. Chance. You yeah. take a gamble and go for it. Yeah. All right, back to live. Another successful break. <laughs> And when you can break like this, you don't ever have to turn up the table, do you? Is it... No, it's, um, if you've got a good break, you don't have to play well. <laughs> a little thinner on this, yeah. on this shot. Touch a left hand spin. But not yeah. a problem. I like the way he went three times across the table. These are quite fast tables, the clock. Brand new, of course. Perfectly controlled. It'll draw shot. He's a little bit straight on this six, so may not be able to get close to the seven. Might have to shoot the seven from some distance or medium distance at least. Think no, drawing back no. to the center table. Yeah, a little drawback. Yeah. Uh, spin this round one, two, three rails for the nine in the top right. Inside English. Has he overhit it a little bit? Yeah, see, that's caught him out a little bit. Should make it though. Shouldn't be a problem for SVB. SVB oh, yeah. six nil. Or is that seven? Seven nil now. It's seven nil. In like twenty five minutes or something. It's how long has this match been, uh Patrick? It's, it it doesn't even feel that long. It's uh it it's fit. barely started, it feels like. Yeah, we started I think right after twelve thirty, so almost thirty minutes. And they lagged for break, I'm assuming. Lag for the break, yeah, lag is massive. Yeah. And yeah. so that is <laughs> Lee Van's only mistake. Yeah. Seven. If you can call it that. Minus one. And so Lee Van is just hoping for a little bit of luck on Shane's break. And that is it, the cue ball is the unpredictable part. This is the first tough shot he's had in this match so far. Yeah, where do you what do you do with the three ball here? Um depends if he's choosing to attack 
Um, if he's choosing to attack, he just got to roll it in and bank the three, maybe. Okay. Quite a cute don't. angle for the side pocket. He's looking at it. But these are quite generous. These And this could pockets. be a two-way, too, if he's going to dart through that gap between the two and the eight. Wow. He's on it. Look at that. And he would have been pretty safe, most yeah. likely, if that had bobbled. That was two-way, yeah. That's a great shot, though, isn't it? Just pound it into the side pocket like it's... I think the pocket's big. Bottom left on the cue ball. Well, that slightly different, difficult position that he started with didn't cause him any problem at all. It didn't slow him down at all. He is storming ahead. He's making it look too easy. That's the power of the break. I urge everybody to practice their break. You don't have to be a great player to win tournaments if you've got a good break. Yeah, and let's take a look at this shot. How how narrow is that yeah. pocket there, Imran, from that mm -hmm. angle? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be easy on a on a diamond, trust me. Yeah, everybody always talks about the size of the pockets, but they're always just talking about the corner pockets, of course, that dimension. The side pockets are another thing altogether. And they're actually a lot, a lot bigger than the corner pockets. Uh, to measure it's like five and, five and a quarter or something. And if Lee Van Cortez does end up with a, a shot in the next couple of racks, what a massive pressure on him. <laughs> to do something with it. Oh, look at this. Another. Shane Roadmap line. Van Boning. That's what you should call him. <laughs> Needs to mind his work getting on the five here. Doesn't want too much angle on the four. Right. Kind of where he is right now. Yeah, kind of where he is right now. He wants to draw back to center table because, on the four. Because the seven blocks the, other, the long pocket, so he has to get. Exactly, yeah. I just make sure he doesn't bring the side pocket into play here. He, he could go with the inside, yeah. Oh, go forward. Th th three rails around the back of the five. Ah, oh, right, around the back of the five. Brilliant. Just yeah. like you said. It laid uh, perfect for that. Yeah, I would have... Yeah. Hit that with outside English and scratched, scratched in the side pocket. Center table again now. Doesn't want to be straight on the six. Uh, he's going to be straight. Tish. Yeah. So with a little angle like that, what's he looking at? Maybe just following forward uh, yeah. two rails? I think he can go forward with um, some high left. 11 o'clock on the cue ball. Yeah, nicely done. This is uh, quite a treat for us. We don't always see a seven pack, you know, and this could, right. th this could be the whole set. And this might be quite a quite a headline if he runs the whole ten. Absolutely. Has Lee had a shot in the in the first couple of racks? He had one, one shot in which rack? In the third rack. So we've had a, a run of two, followed by this, which is, is that a run of six now, is it? This could be... Or seven. Yeah, a historic moment. Uh, no, actually, Earl Strickland's actually ran 10 racks right. back in the day. And that was um, when he got insured million dollars. for a million yeah. dollars, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, not far behind that. And I read about that, and it, it did include quite a few, what, nine ball breaks or one nine combinations. Or... Yeah, yeah, a couple.
<laughs> wow. <laughs> the quickest match I've ever commentated on. Well, we'll have to keep you for the next match then. <laughs> All in the side, as per normal. Got, and he's got a shot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We've been corrected in the comments. Lee Van shot twice so far. We're going to have to... I mean, this is a given as well, this rack. It's, it's all over, you've got to say. He's on the hill. And Lee Van is a great, great player, but doesn't really matter much if you don't shoot. This is Naughty Pool. We have um, a saying, one of our best players in England, Judd Trump, he's a snooker yep. player. Mm -hmm. He plays Naughty Snooker. Naughty. This is Naughty Pool, yeah. <laughs> he plays a lot of interesting power spin shots like that yeah. you don't see yeah. the other players play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, short and sweet, it's been an absolute pleasure to witness this, actually. Lee's jumping up. He's going to try and grab his cue. Hey, <laughs> he missed. He missed. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. What a performance. Well, great, great show by Great Shane sense of humor from Lee Van Cortez, who had his moment <laughs> of defeat. Shane Van Boning, it's just an absolutely phenomenal performance there, showing you he's uh, planning on winning this tournament. He's not the only player who feels that way, but... Uh, uh, Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. You know this is, this is not over. We've got a lot more pool coming up. Uh, we'll be streaming the next match on Table 1 uh, very shortly. Uh, Imran, I don't know if you would stick in the comedy box on the yeah, next well, match. Yeah, this was we'll, so short. I want we'll to uh, do some more. <laughs> we'll probably be starting up right away. Um, yeah, I think the next matches are going to be going uh, 2.45, 3 p.m.-ish. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit. We're going to be on a bit of a break, but we'll take a little pause here and we'll be back shortly. Imran, thank you. No problem. We'll speak to you soon. Speak to you soon, guys.
Welcome back to Culey's Connecticut Nine Ball Open. Uh, this is a world ranking nine ball ranking event. Uh, we're at US One Billiards, which is Jason Shaw's uh, pool hall in Connecticut. Uh, this is MH Potting Penglis. I'm joined again in the commentary box with Imran Majid. Thanks for being here, Imran. Hello, guys. An absolute pleasure to be here. Yeah. We had we had you commentate on the previous match, and everybody was watching. For about 25 Fully minutes, understands yeah. how quick that match was. The most incredible match. Yeah, if you guys don't know, uh, Shane broke and ran seven in a row. Uh, he actually broke and ran nine, but seven consecutive racks. Uh, put a demolition job on the slayer, Lee Van Corteza. Yeah, and poor Lee Van. He got to the table twice in, in one rack. A couple of safeties. I think he was actually trying to bank the two ball on that second one. But that was it. Shane Shane took over, but what a matchup we have here! Yeah, the Eagle Eye against um, the informed Anton Raga. Yeah, and Anton, we, I commented on his match earlier this morning. Played phenomenally well. He's playing really, really well. He knocked out Copigny. Well, um, his last two matchroom events, he's got to the final twice, I believe. Uh, the first rack is a dry break from Jason. Would you and the, the way these tables have been playing with the one ball in the side, would you call that a mistake? Um, he probably mishit him, or, or it could be um, a bad rack by the referee. Oh, ouchie, that's um, that's possible, even with a template. If you don't get them all perfectly touching, it can um, have an impact on the rack. That was a nice shot. He had to play that with some inside. It was a better shot than it actually looked. He's a little, th little thin on this uh, two ball, but can go across the table twice. Well, maybe three times, actually. One, two, okay, twice. In good position here. his window here on the four ball yes pretty natural and the four ball leads a uh, natural shape for the five everything's connected here yeah he's got a nice layout yeah he's got he's got a nice demeanor about himself as well as he goes around the table not too hurried playing within himself just um nice momentum i would say he has Yeah, and he doesn't waste any time. Uh, his last match, he really did. He put on a bit of a clinic too. He did make a couple of errors, which swung. We thought he was going to totally whitewash that match, and then uh, Copinier came right? back. Copinier came back. Yeah, nine, nine seven. Yeah, he is the best player in the Philippines at the moment. Gives all the players like the likes of Dennis Okulo. He gives them a handicap. Really? Money matches. Yeah. You're kidding me. All of them. He gives them the seven or the eight ball. Yeah. Wow. Well, he must be very good. I'd not seen him until uh, until this morning's match and uh, very impressed. Dennis Orcolo, he's known for like his money matches, isn't he? Yeah, the money match king. That was his name for uh, for many years. But Anton may bots in balls. May well be a new kid kid on the block. Wow. I say new, he has been playing, you know, underground matches in the Philippines for years and years. Sure. But he's uh, just hit must, the tournament scene. Must have scene learned his now. skills somewhere. Yeah. yeah, just hit the tournament scene now and he's um yeah. He's twenty five years old. Yeah. Fresh faced. You know, people might think that Jason Shaw has a home field advantage, but these tables are brand new. The cloth's brand new. And when the pros came in the day before to practice, he was too busy, of course, organizing and making sure that the uh, the place was ready. And uh, Oh, he's nearly going to scratch there. And he's actually got a shot on the one now. He wouldn't have had otherwise. 
he hit the far titty of the side pocket or knuckle and uh, gave him shape on the one. Thank you very much. The point. The point, yeah. <laughs> That's an American terminology, the, the titty, right? Yep. Yeah, you hear, it, you hear it a lot. Yeah. I'm trying not to say it today, but... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> We say knuckle or far jaw. You know? And of course it's... Looks like he's got a nice angle to get on the three. Float down table. Three to four could be a bit tricky. May have to draw back off the three and play the four long. And he walks around with such confidence, doesn't he? He always looks like he's yeah, not he's... bothered by any of this. Mm -hmm. And I always notice Jason Shaw, he has such a sort of an easy looking stance. It's like his legs are fairly close together and he just bends down. Not quite like some of these other more sort of elaborate, yeah. stretched out stances. Jason's always had that kind of um, lackadaisical approach, um, which serves, serves, serves him well, actually, I think. I don't think he's too big on alignment and getting down on the shot right. He's just such a natural yeah. talent. Seems he just, just wander in. He knows his, yeah. He's going to make the ball. He's just stand how you like, really. That's <laughs> amazing, isn't it? Ball, yeah. Let that be a lesson to everyone out there. The stance don't matter. Just yeah. get your cue in line and point it in the right direction. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Yours is more kind of snooker style, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's uh, less snooker style than it used to be. I have adapted my uh, stance over the years. It's not so compact as it was when because I Because the game's play. different? Different stance for a different yeah, game? Yeah, my, my, my cueing arm is a little way away from my body and not so compact near my body as you would like in snooker. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously you have to yank that cue ball around the table and you don't want your arm hitting your chest. Oh. You know? So you want to yeah, have some... A uh, little bit more freedom. Freedom, distance from your body oh. to the cue, cue arm, yeah. Well, match tied up, 1-1. One, one. Let's see if Jason can get uh, get the one in the side yeah. on the break here. A better break than the first one, which was dry, which might not have been his fault. Usually a very good breaker of the balls, Jason. Ooh. Go in. Another dry one. Wow. That's not a very good sign, Jason. And a nice open table Need for to. Anton. Yeah, it's rather concerning that for Jason Shaw fans. Two dry breaks in a row. Interesting uh, way to get what looked like an almost certain position. Uh, get yourself in trouble. Yeah, the 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 one was quite thin, so uh, he didn't plan on hitting the five ball there. He was going through that gap to go in and out, then, huh? Yeah, if he didn't hit it, he would be nice on this two. I think he can still cut it in. He can go one, two, three rails in the back row. All, come all back the way up to the top. Yep, yeah, just like there, that. There. Slide, slide, nicely done. Could have done with a bit more speed on the ball, but it looks very thin to cut in. Might might opt for the bank here. Yeah, because he doesn't really need to move the cue ball, does he? 
Just do whatever he needs to do to get this bank in. Cutting the ball is also an option, but of course then you've got that big sort of snooker zone that he's got to no negotiate his way in and out of. There is the bank. Expected him to get that, and he expected to get that as well. Yeah, and he, he did have a nice angle on that bank, so he did was able to send the cue ball down table. And from that kind of angle, these pockets seem to play tight. This Sliding down the rail, like you were saying before, on, on a new table is making them play easy at the moment. And so what, they'll sort of play a little bit tougher as they get played in. That's right, yeah. Jason's recently uh, changed to a carbon fiber shaft, so I don't think he's completely dialed in with it yet. But um, such a natural shooter, I don't think it will be a problem. He was a, a, later, a late adapter, or a, a le he came to carbon fiber yeah, more recently? Yeah, um, I don't know why he changed, maybe got bored with wood and wanted to try out carbon fiber and he probably thought everybody's using carbon fiber these days let me give it a, a go i was noticing out there though there's still a lot of maple out there in the field and i uh, billy thought was using keel wood which yeah is maple but i think it's just sort of toasted a little bit basically yeah yeah and what do you shoot with uh carbon fiber you do yeah yeah they say once you go black you never go back <laughs> yeah so uh i'm sticking with my carbon fiber yeah, I love it. And you I wear like it. you wear a glove. I wear a glove. Yeah, that was a you... bad miss by Jason. Oh wow. Yeah, it was a bit um, rushed. Took it for granted, I think. And uh, you can't do that at this top level. Bad mistake. That was a bad shot as yeah, well. Was... Totally underhit that. Lucky for him, he's laid nice, pretty good on the bank. Yeah. Yeah, he came just far enough to need. He's already missed one bank, so let's see if he gets this one. Yep, straight in. Not a problem. Yeah, that's going to bother Jason Shaw. Yeah, Jason hit that eight ball right into the rail. Yeah. Oh, someone's saying on the chat that Jason uses a Perry's graphite shaft, so it's not carbon fiber. Thanks for that, W Hawkeye. Graphite. They used to make graphite snooker cues back in the day, and uh, yeah, they were never really considered very good, though, were they? No, they weren't. People yeah, didn't like them. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, a new thing, and they're frictiony, they're draggy, so you kind of have to wear a glove, right? More. Well, with carbon fiber. Or well, graphite? even carbon fiber. Yeah, yeah most both. of them. No, yeah, there's yeah. a couple of them that are a yeah. little bit different, but the mm -hmm. vast majority of them are just carbon fiber tubes with no finish. Yeah, and they drag just a little bit more. If you wear a glove, it's a it, it's a, it's a mute point. That's a good break. There is a brand that makes uh, a pea shower cues out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, have pioneered a, a completely new. Uh, it's carbon fiber, but it's mixed with another fiber, and uh, it slides much better than the simple carbon fiber tubes. Okay. That most of the other ones are made out of. And uh, it's going airborne. It's going to land right on the two. And uh, a little, little draw on it. Nice shot. Yeah, carbon fiber has its advantages, disadvantages. Um, I like the advantages. 
because I travel a lot around the world. It's never going to warp in your yeah. case or bend. Yeah, they're, they're, they're virtually uh, indestructible, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of Q repairs uh, back in Wisconsin. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of course, yeah, a lot of players with their maple shafts, they drop them, they ding them, they shaft cleanings, get out the, you know, refinish them. And uh, the carbon fiber users aren't coming come to me for anything uh, of that nature. So a pretty good lay of the land here for Anton. We can play a little kiss on the seven ball here and just nudge it towards the corner pocket. I'm not sure. I think it would just draw away and play the seven in the same sh pocket. Yeah. Right. Right. You are. Has a very good cue ball, Anton, from what I've seen. Well, if you play 10 hours a day, you're going to have a good cue ball after a while, aren't you? You would hope so. Yeah. That seems more true for some players than others. What's your uh, practice trading regime like, uh, Imran? I've never really been um, a practice person. Um, I still have to practice, obviously, but I don't do six, seven hours like some players. I do my two or three hours more more constructive practice than just hitting balls and stuff. I don't pot any balls. I don't make balls when I practice. I practice the break. Sometimes I'll do like a hundred breaks. Wow. Um, I'll practice my kicking and my safety. There's no point mm -hmm. potting balls because I know I'm going to do that forever. You do that. Yeah. You've you've got that down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice break. Does have a bank on the two. And his cue ball will go around the houses and have shape on the three. So kind of a do or die shot here. I yeah. reckon he shoots it. Yeah, and he, he was playing very aggressive in his earlier matches uh, too. Yeah, at the top level, they, gonna... they do want to... Because if you play a safe, your opponent's going to play a kick and then you've got to hope that you get another, you know, that it yeah, comes out yeah, okay. No. You want to take the bull by the horns. And there it is. There's no better outcome than that one. Three ball goes. There you go. No marker needed. Referee definitely takes that magic rack out. Not too much problem here, is there? No, pretty good. Um, going to negotiate the five to the table. six. He's straight, so he's probably just going to draw back. I mean, these guys play rotation, 15 balls on the table sure. in number sequence, so nine ball is a piece of cake. Yeah. You know? That's uh, probably the most common game in the Philippines, rotation. Yeah, that's why I practice as well sometimes. Rotation. 15 balls in, yep. in number sequence. Sure. Yeah. I play the ghost, 15 ball ghost. Can you beat the ghost in uh, 15 ball It's took rotation? me about three years and I've beaten it once. That's very, uh, very uh, difficult. About 100 sets, yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, it's well, very tough. Great, yeah. A great training. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome training, yeah. You come and play nine ball afterwards, it's, it's a walk in the park. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just got to be careful getting position here on the eight. Yeah, no problem at all. Perfect. Yeah, and the first half of the rack in your 15 ball rotation is tougher than the second half. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot with, of... With all the clutter. Banks and uh, uh, combos and caroms you have to play with in 15 ball because you don't always get a good lay of the land. There's so many clusters. Well, break and run from Anton there.
And this is this is what he did against Copian Yi this morning. And Jason Shaw's missed eight ball is uh, you might look back and that is quite a bit of a turning point. You know, Absolutely, this, this could, could could be the Jason Shaw show right now. Yeah, yeah, it could be the telling factor. Yeah, that eight ball. It's early days yet. Four one in a race to ten. But as we saw in the last match with Shane, you know, one mistake and uh, <laughs> your opponent can actually win the whole set. And that's why Jason's not worried because he's planning on doing that. Yeah, when I'm he gets sure. the chance. He's sitting, yeah. he's sitting there thinking, you know. But if he keeps on breaking dry, <laughs> it's going right. to be tough. Jason just should try and emulate what he's doing. If your break's not working, just and your opponent's is, just try and copy what he's doing. Yeah. I'm actually quite surprised, though, at the, you know, the box, which obviously narrows your... Uh, the places you can put the cue ball, but they're not even going to the edge of the box on this cut break. They're getting... They're, they're, they're moving the cue ball in slightly. Yeah. Um, well, Anton's is virtually in the middle of the box. Yeah. Yeah, more so than anyone else. Close to the center. Yeah, yeah. I was doing that in my earlier matches as well. It was working pretty good, but then my the next match, it wasn't working on that particular table. You've got to try and read read the table and see how it's breaking. Every table breaks different, obviously. Mm. Yeah, pretty good safe. Might have to go behind the four and kick this one rail, two rails. Not sure if he's got an edge. Yeah, not a lot of space is there around the, behind the four. Oh, that's nice. He could see quite a lot of the two ball. That's a good result. Yeah, good shot, to it, Jason. I would, I would feel Jason desperately needs this rack, you know. Otherwise, uh, could be an uphill task. Do you think he's going to play a soft kick shot here and try and get the the two ball through that gap by the four? I think he's going to go two rails and hit. Oh, one rail. Oh, what a shot. Yeah. That's okay. beautiful. That's perfect. I didn't see that shot straight away. See the Filipinos um, at the kicking and safety. That's why they're miles ahead. They've got that side of the game down. Obviously, it helps when you you grow up playing with Efren and Bustamante. Yeah. You know, you see the way they kick and, you know. Yeah, and these guys are household names in the Philippines, aren't they? Yeah. The the Filipino public, even the non pool playing Filipino public, yeah, mm -hmm. pays attention uh, to pool. I used to go to the Philippines quite a lot. There used to be a lot of tournaments out there. I used to go to Manila like three or four times a year, but uh, tournaments seem to have died down there now. Hmm. It was a pretty good kick. It's got some distance. Tough shot for Anton if he's going to attack, but I think it's just going to stun behind the six. Soft stun. Well controlled. Nicely executed. Yeah. That shot wasn't easy. <clears throat> See how Jason kicks this one rail with a soft speed. Good things can happen if you make contact here. Uh, left him uh, shot in the side. Yeah, he had a chance there to get lucky. He also would have liked to see the two will go in, but he got a good hit, but it's not enough, is it? He's got to mind his work here getting on the five. Because uh, the seven's in the path of the natural position. 
He's going forward with top right. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. Now he's going to swing round one, two, three rails. Yeah, makes sense. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So he takes the seven out of the equation this way. Smart thinking. A little bit steeper than he wanted. Yeah, but um, it's not a problem. Anything but straight. These pockets do play quite generous, so uh, no reason to get straight in. And an angle to get back down on the eight ball is what he's looking for. Yeah, he doesn't want to shoot the six in the top. He, want, he wants to play it in the side, and as you said, he wants to look for that angle. Didn't, didn't play for that, Little and nudge. that's a scratch. Oh, wow. That's a scratch. Bad mistake by Anton. Didn't expect that. Yeah, there's no real need for that. Jason Shaw fans out there, breathe a sigh of relief. I've got to say a big shout out to one of the sponsors, Nightshot.com. Uh, they are mine and Jason's sponsor. You can see their logo on the top right hand part of the screen. It's now changed to Rasson. But that's where you'll see it's the rotating, sponsors. Yep. Yeah. And uh, for those of you, you guys who don't know, is uh, Nightshot are the biggest uh, billiard suppliers in the Middle East. Um, oh. Uh, sports equipment and billiard tables, cues, you name it, yep. Uh, Jason Jordan just opened up a pool room in Dubai uh, with Nightshot. I just went over there recently for the opening. How is it? Yeah, lovely pool room. It's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Very nice pool, pool room. Plush uh, chandeliers, really nice uh, wow. furniture and uh, decor. It's got some lovely ambience about it as well, yeah. What kind of tables do they have? Uh, they got night shot tables, which night are shot. very good, yeah, very good. The Royal Table, which is the high end of the night shot um, tables, uh, they're really good, really. Built like oxes, um, yeah. You could compare them with a, a Brunswick Gold Crown, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a better break by Jason, but no cigar on the two ball. Yeah, no. Pretty unlucky how the balls have spread, really. I mean, that just comes down to luck. He did hit a good break. Cue ball central. No shot. And even if he plays a good safety and maintains an advantage, the three still doesn't go. It, it does go in the bottom left corner pocket. Uh, it looks like a tricky rack, but it's actually not. If you get on the three, the four is a carom on the seven. Mm. Um, it's quite a doable rack if you do get a chance. Sure. Left hand spin, nice control, good shot. Now, if the nine wasn't there, he could have maybe played a, a jump, but um, he's going to have to kick this. With good speed. I mean, it doesn't really look like it's going safe. Yeah, with, with anything other be than No. Oh, he's aiming to just lay on it. Yeah, that's a good containing shot. Yeah, nice shot. Yeah, good hit. Jason was looking to see if he could play it off the seven, but I don't think that presents itself. Is there a way for him now to get the cue ball behind the, the six and the eight? Mm, no. I mean, it is doable, but you're going to... You're going to let the two ball loose. What, what uh, do you like here? Um, I, I like thinning it and maybe going back behind the uh, nine and five. I mean, if you don't get the snooker, you're not selling out as well. Mm. 
Maybe he's just um, getting his cue ball behind the nine and the two back down table. I don't see any future in this shot. Unless he's oh wow, coming this that is way. incredible because he has achieved it. Look at that, he's going to get behind the five. Okay, that was a good shot. Yeah, that was a good he shot. Plucked that out of nowhere, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, the speed was uh, perfect on that shot. Me, personally, I wouldn't have played it because uh, nice. you have to get the speed perfect. Yeah, and know exactly where the two ball is going to end up. Yeah. Incredible shot. This is a tricky situation as well for Jason. Maybe he's just got to thin it and try and come back behind the nine or five. Yeah, that's all he could do. Or oh, he didn't want to hit those. I've got to say that's probably the the new shaft. Yeah, he's not so dialed in with it. Um, I'm sure if he played that with his maple shaft, he he would have got a good cue ball there. Yeah, hmm. underspun it, I think there. Try to go into the six eight to develop it, uh, and have a shot on the three. Obviously, yeah. yeah. With the four and the five down table, it's not impossible for him to play some kind of break shot. But uh, no, if if he gets straight in on the four, he needs a little bit of right spin here and leaves a half ball shot on the five so you can play one rail into the six eight i'm not sure if he's got that angle yeah he's looking at it now half ball shot on the five from there from the rail into the same pocket that the four is going into yeah into the same pocket leave an angle to bust um, the six eight open or he could play it behind it and hook him behind the eight So he just pointed his cue onto the rail there where he wants his cue ball to land. So, okay. You got to and, then, and then into the balls. One. And then into the balls, yeah. I would say probably somewhere near the first diamond after the side pocket. Touch of right hand spin. Just oh. missed it. Too much spin, yeah. It was a good effort. Wow. Now, has he got any action on the eight ball cross side bank or even a treble? <laughs> Tricky situation. A treble off two rails? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to do here. He's looked like he's going to play a snooker somehow. One rail behind the eight. Yeah, one rail behind the eight. Overhit it. Just yeah. leaked out. Yeah. Now, Jason has a good chance to get behind the eight ball. Hmm. He may just go ahead and, and rip at this bank. I know he's tempted because he likes to attack. I'll go ahead and bank it. Let's have a... No, he's playing the right shot. Turning yeah. off it. Yeah, he's playing the right shot. He's not got a snooker, though. He's given a chance no, to Anton here. No, he hasn't got a snooker. Was there no safety where he could kind of get behind, leave the cue ball up here behind the eight and send the six ball back down? Yeah, there is that. It's, it's a little bit touchy. The cue ball's traveling a long distance, and you go over a little bit of chalk or dust, and it's going to veer off. So pros tend to stay away from those, although he did attempt it, and, yeah, it slightly moved off, and, and there you go. You sell out. So, uh, yeah, I'm surprised he played that, actually. But. Pros don't usually play those. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, oh, bad wow. miss. You've got to aim far jaw there, uh, Jason. He knows that. I mean, it has been tough for Jason. In his defense, he's been working so hard to get this tournament up and running. Yeah. With, and in the short space of time, a week, I think, they had to get this all ready. And, uh, you know, he's been working relentless hours. So 
to try and concentrate and do all that stuff as well, you know. And still have a million questions of people coming to you. Absolutely. Oh, that's a bad shot. Oh, wow. Didn't want to pop the seven. Although he's still okay on the eight. Not the best performance I've seen Anton in a in a match so far. Oh, he's okay. Yeah, I've got to put that down to Jason's new shaft. He wouldn't be missing those balls with his um, maple shaft. Now, would that make a player just want to go get the old one and switch back? Or No, I think he's made a, he's a, a commitment now. Yeah, he's just going to persevere and go through the motions. Because uh, every player will, once they make the transition from wood to carbon, they will have, you know, um, doubts. Yeah. Because yeah. it just doesn't feel what you're used to. Yeah, the the feeling is completely different to wood. And, uh, you know, there's quite a few adjustments you have to make. And so that'll be going in the back of his head right now. Oh, what, have I, what am I doing with this shaft? Where's my wood shaft? But uh, you just got to persevere and get on with it, yeah. Mm. Rack number seven it is 4-2 to the Philippines. Yeah, you see he's using a little bit of left inside spin on the ball and trying to um, draw the cue ball around the nine to get it kind of central. Has got a combo, 1-3. This should be uh, pretty doable for Raga because... Um, He's a ro rotation player, plays a lot of combinations. Usually tougher combinations than this. I'm going to have to start playing more rotation. Yeah, um, to all you budding nine ball players out there, don't don't go and throw nine balls out the ta on the table when you're practicing. Chuck 15 balls on the table and uh, see how you do. Now, not only did he not make that ball, but he also didn't get himself no, a shot no. on the one ball, which yeah, is, yeah. turned out to his favour, but that, went, that shot went wrong. Bit of a problem here. I don't know why he would have put the cue ball there. I would have thought more central table to make sure you have a shot. He's going to rip at this one rail. Yeah, with speed to it, might. Yeah. Make yeah. something. Yeah. Good things and, can happen. And the three ball was hanging too, and he's now got the one over the pocket. I don't know if he's... Can he see it full ball, though? It looks like he's just getting straight down to it. So he's... Oh, he can. He can. He can. He can hit the left hand edge of the one. That'll do nicely. Yeah. Good shot. Well, yeah. Well open judged. table. He's got to take this chance now. I think he will. Uh, for me, I'd like Jason to slow down a touch here, just to get back in the mix, if you know what I mean. He's overhit that a little bit, but it shouldn't be a problem. You can play two rails for the seven in the same pocket. Distance not a problem for Jason. Also hails from a snooker background, as we all do from the UK. And British pool. And British pool, yeah, yeah. Obviously tight pockets, yeah. And he did very well, didn't he, in the in the British pool? world before he switched over yeah yeah he's actually a world champion at the game yeah black ball it's called he won the world championships in france it's a newer name though isn't it when i was a kid growing up and sneaking into the pubs and playing pool there was they, we never called it that is that just now 
with the advent and the comparison to American Pool, which we didn't have to do back then because we didn't know any better? Um, that's a good question. I don't know why they called it Black Ball, but... Um... Yeah, so they I, want to distinguish it from eight ball, and it's kind of the same concept, like the same it sort was, of game. Back in the day, it was just pool, wasn't pool. it? Yeah, that's the reds, only thing we called it. Pool. Yellows. Yep. You go right. down the pub, you see reds and yellows, yep. and you just call it pool. But and you foul, and you miss your next visit to the yeah. table. Now they started to even Chinese eight ball. They call it hay ball now. I, I don't know why. Maybe it's a sponsorship thing or something. And that's a relatively new thing, isn't it? It's like yeah. a nine foot snooker table with American pool balls. Yeah, yeah. Is it's that... not a new thing. No, no. They've been around a few years now. Not Chinese eight ball, yeah. Well, relatively though. I mean Yeah, relatively in in the grand scheme because of things. Because it is yeah. basically the rules of American eight ball. Yes, right? yes, yes. And the balls are American pool balls. Yeah, on very so tight. It's kind of like a an interesting sort of hybrid. Yeah, yeah, it's a hybrid on exactly. A... You hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. On what's best described I think as a nine foot snooker table, really. Mm-hmm. Um, concerning dry break again by Jason. That's three dry breaks in a row, I believe. Has left a cut shot on the one ball. Needs to find a path for the two ball. Overcuts it by a mile. Nearly head butted the ceiling. He jumped up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel, but you know, obviously this match is not at all similar to the Shane Van Boning match where we were just seeing some perfect play, really. Yeah, it yeah, was, there was. There's no critique of uh, of Shane's performance there, was there? I don't, there was no, no, was no mistake. One way trap traffic, an absolute demolition job. I know both these players are capable of playing like that. Yeah, does he go into gonna... the six here to develop the three? Yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, very nice. And Anton was playing kind of like that earlier today, although he didn't run a whole bunch in a row. Um, there always seemed to be random problems that didn't, but he he was playing so well. Jason should find his groove here because uh, Anton's let him off the hook a few times in this match already. He's probably thinking, oh, well, he's a good player, but he's not playing too well right now. Let me... Yeah, and I let think me try and uh, make a match of this. That's right. That's true of both players, really. They both they both uh, slipped up. Yeah, some errors. So he needs to get an angle on the five to get over for the six. Oh, someone just told me on the chat, hay is black in China, hence the the word hay ball. Ah. So yeah, it's all about black ball, black, black, black. Yeah. He's just conceded and left himself this angled shot. He, he doesn't mind it. No, that, that well, that's the right shot. You don't want to be straight in. You don't want to be straight on the seven yeah. and find that other window. Anything no, right. but straight in, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, he's back in the match. There's one little tricky shot to... There you go. Yep, 5-4. He's knocking on the door. <laughs> There we go. That's better, Jason. Okay, now he's got a break. But like we were saying, he doesn't have necessarily the home field advantage, you might guess, this being his pool hall, because all these tables are brand new, and he didn't get to practice before the tournament. Exactly. Um, so he's really not played on these tables, and so the question of dialing down the uh, the break, what do you have to do to adjust to make to get that one ball? which at the moment keeps going a little bit too far forward yeah, well, for he, him. Yeah, he just needs to find the sweet spot on the one, Yeah, which he will do. Just cut it a little bit thinner. Does that make it go thinner a little bit Thinner or higher? thicker, whatever. Yeah. You should just gauge from where the one ball is hitting on the rail. At the moment, Jason's one ball is hitting before the side pocket. So he's probably got to hit it a little bit thinner. And now he's going to the middle like yeah. A Anton. And yeah, experiment, change the spot of the cue ball, hit it thicker, thinner, to find a sweet spot. because he does usually break very well. He 
Another dry break. That's quite amazing. Four dry breaks in the... Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, can't run a seven pack if you can't make a ball on the break. <laughs> but yeah, not just the one, but the other balls didn't go in either. Yeah. Complete contrast from the last match, right? Yeah. Yeah, pretty open table. Once it gets on the five, I think that's all she wrote. This shot's a little tricky, though, isn't it? Um, I think he just yeah. If he if he goes forward, try to nudge the six. That can be tricky. He could just draw off the side rail, play in the middle of the table. And he's just gone down to point to that window. Yeah, he, he, he wants uh, a natural angle on the three to get to the four. So he's going to try and play intricate position here. But, well, okay, no, he did what I said. Yeah, the, the fail-safe way, yeah, just take everything out of the equation. Uh, probably plays the four inside here. Under hit it, did play the four inside. Anton, not at the races. That was a better shot than it looked. He played that with some inside spin. We do have the matchroom crew here, Brendan Moore and uh, Jake Aspie, making sure everything's uh, running smoothly. Yeah. And they are very nicely allowing us to stream this. Yes, it's a nice uh, result for you guys. So it looks like Anton's going to take a two-rack lead. Hasn't performed his best so far on this set, but uh, everyone's human. Everyone can have a bad set. Yeah, the real question is, can you battle through it and s s keep the match? That's a sign of the champion if you can play, play bad and win. Yeah. So a little update on other matches that are going on currently. Actually, uh, of course, we all know about uh, Shane Van Boning versus Lee Van Corteza, beating him 10-0. Um, Lee Ri Teng uh, beating Jose Alberto Delgado, 10-4. Ko Pin Chung, 10-1 uh, over Carlo Biado. And uh, Moritz Neuh Neuhausen, 10-3 over Do The Kine. And uh, the matches that are currently going, uh, Wu Kun Lin is 3-5 down against Mario He. Nuyuki Oi is 4-2 up against John Mora. Chang Yu Lung is tied up with Billy Thorpe at 2-2. And back to this match. Anton Raga, 6-4. Ahead of Jason Shaw. Nice break by Raga. Yeah, open table. Yeah, 
ominous, ominous sign. So I've got to say, this is 7-4 in the making. And breaking if he, if he runs out here, which means, you know, if he gets his breakdown. I mean, we, we, we say it's a given, but how many times did we see players mess up and... <laughs> Yeah, and it's never a gimme. You've got this number of balls on the table. Yeah. Um, believe me, I know how to mess stuff up like this. <laughs> me too. There's plenty of ways to go wrong. <laughs> We've all we, done it. We don't usually expect it from these, you know, players of this caliber. But there's so many moving parts to this game. Someone's written the Chinese eight ball. The, the prize money will steal all the players soon. Well, they do have a ridiculous prize money. 750000 for first in one of their tournaments. I mean, that's proper money, right? Yeah. And a very large viewing audience. Yeah. I read somewhere that there's more snooker tables in Shanghai than in the whole of Britain. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it, yeah. They're all snooker crazy now. And they will take over the snooker world. In the years to come, yeah. It'll be all Chinese. All the top players will be Chinese. In the next, say, 10 years or so. We'll see about that. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong, but uh, that's the way it's looking like. Right, it's going to cut this in the side. He's seeing if the seven goes past the nine. It looks like it does. Or he could play around the seven, between the rail and the seven, just like this, and have perfect shape. Looks like he's just going to draw back then and play the eight into the, yeah, the short left side. Hand. That's pretty perfect. Yeah, you just draw to the rail now. Play the nine the long way. Mm -hmm. Anton's probably thinking, I've played bad so far in this set. I can't play any worse, so let's... Get my act together. Yeah, to be seven four ahead. Knowing you can do better. Yeah. Yeah, he's played terrible for his standards and he's seven four ahead. Asia will take over the billiards scene soon, someone's written. No Chinese players won the world championship in snooker yet. No, 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 good point. Ding Jong Wee was predicted to. Mm -hmm. Millions of people back home watching him and yeah, expecting yeah. him to. Yeah. I've got to say, the quality of your stream is awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. And I've That's done a, a lot of commentary over the years, and it's probably the best I've ever seen. Yeah, they've got a little team here. They do a great job. Mr. G in production over there giving us a thumbs up for that comment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I'm sure all the viewers would agree. I mean, awesome clarity. Well, we've worked really hard at trying to perfect this over the last, I don't know, five years. Uh -huh, you've done a great job. Keep it up. Are you going to play the 3-9 combination? In a shot's time. Um, He's going to shoot the two and not scratch. That's it's pretty difficult to get right behind it because you want to be straight on it. I'm not sure if he'll play that shot. We will see. You might be right. Because he can't stay up there. It's got quite a big angle. It looks like he could come between the eight and seven, play the three in the side. 
Or and that was oh, the plan. The ball. That was the plan, but he's missed the ball. Easy jump shot for Jason. And Jason could have a 3-9 combo if he lands good on it. Take a little look at this. Rest shot. Yeah. See, for a snooker player, this is a hanger. Yeah, I know the American players always like to avoid the rest at all costs. Yeah, and they... yeah, yeah. Might not even need to jump this. Okay, he's jumping, yeah. Should have some sort of combination on the nine after this. Oh, he's Caught trying to come first. around. That was a little bit risky. Oh, unlucky there. Yeah. Was he trying to catch the rail first, do you think? I don't think he did. No, I think he's 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 jumping directly at the ball here. No, he got the rail first, yeah. Yeah. And that wasn't a terrible attempt at getting underneath it, if that's what he was playing. Yeah, it was a bit tricky, though. It's a, it's, the a seven. Good cue ball. it's a good cue ball. Behind the nine. He is behind the nine. Yeah, nice shot. Wow. I'm going to pluck one out out of the middle of nowhere. He's got to go airborne. He's going to try and uh, maybe cross bank it in the side. I don't think he can see it full ball. Because you can't jump over the seven, too. You're saying jump over the nine. Or the kick. Yeah, he's going to play the kick. Yeah, he's going to kick, yeah. Oh, he, he wants his cue ball where the six is behind the six. Let's see if he pull, pulls this off. If he catches it like three-quarter ball, that's very possible. Oh, wow. It was close, right? He got wow. a nice roll there. Jason not too pleased. But it's got to get some spin on this. Yeah, he got a nice spin on that. And it's a pretty good leave, is it? No. Oh, lucky there. Sticks it up. I'm not sure if the five is uh, come and help Jason yet. It doesn't part. No, that's a pretty good roll for Jason. Hmm, this is tricky. I think I just... What's he doing? He's carrying on the five. Oh, no. Wow, what a shot. Good, good attempt. No, he's left this up. And that's just crept out too. Chance for Jason. Looking ahead, he might have a little problem with the six ball. Might have to play it long off the five. Or in the same pocket as the five. Or the combination on the nine. Yeah, but you have to that. get right behind it. So yeah. you want to avoid that, really. You don't like that shot unless you're straight on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no need, is there? Next He's got place. Other, other pockets. Yeah. Plays behind it. Long. Ooh. Didn't look like it was good at first. Not the best on the of rail. angles, yeah. Might have just just stop your rock there. He's going forward behind the nine with spin. Is he? What is he doing? Yeah, just take the shot. It's a tricky, tricky shot, isn't it? No, this is a hanger. No problem. Yeah, no problem okay. at all. On a snooker table, that was a tough shot. Yeah. <laughs> And sometimes if it gets a, a a kick or a skid or whatever, that shot becomes and yeah, that yeah. finds a way to miss itself sometimes, or maybe it's just me. But Yeah, in snooker system. and other Q sports you tend to get more kicks, but not so much in American pool. Wisely taking a timeout. He's back in the mix. Yep. Definitely. Seven five. In a race to 10 and breaking. And let's have a look, see updates on uh, any of those those other matches that are going on. 
Nukio Oi has extended his lead to 6 2. Wu Kunlin is uh, 4 5 behind Mario He. Uh, Chang Yulung is 5 2 up against Billy Thorpe. And they were 2 2 last time I looked. That Billy Thorpe needs to kick it into high gear. And Jason Shaw is coming back in this match. He now trails 5-7 to seven against Anton Raga. Got to say, uh, shout out to the chefs at this pool room. Yeah, very nice food. Yeah, and that is... Some Jason. good Korean stuff as well. Yeah, Jason Shaw's mum. Okay. She's Jason Shaw's wife's mum. Uh, okay, mother-in-law, yeah. Mother-in-law. Uh, runs, uh, runs the kitchen, and I've heard good things. I haven't ha haven't tried it yet. I have, have to run out after this and grab some. Oh, he's got a nice, nice pool hall here. Yeah, very nice. All nine, nine footers. Four dartboards. And actually has a couple more nine foot tables usually uh, and they, they've kind of spread them out here and moved a couple of them out just to create this little uh, arena area um, that they've got these uh, the two stream tables on. You don't usually see um, pool rooms in America with all nine foot tables. You usually right. have a, a couple of That's right. seven foots at least. I don't know if he had any seven foots before and he took them out for the tournament, but... Uh... No, I don't think so. And uh, okay. yeah, he was, he was saying, yeah, no, he's not a fan of them. It's his place. A lot of the Americans call this the big table. The big ta That's right. <laughs> yeah. It is. This is the big table. And for us, it's a small table, obviously, coming from did. snooker. Yeah. yeah. But you're a pool player now. It's been a long time yeah, since you've played snooker. Yeah, I'm a pool player it's now. Yeah. Ancient let's, history. Let's stop that reference about snooker now. Yeah. I mean, how long has it been since you've uh, been a pro pool player? Um, I started in 2001. So professionally, 22 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still can't get the one ball in the side. Come on. Where, where's your yeah. luck? There you go. <laughs> there he He's, he's hooked on the two now, <laughs> but it's better than hanging the one. Well done. And he's got a kicking stick here on the two ball. He can kick the two ball down table to leave the cue ball right there behind the nine. A little humorous fist pump there from Jason with that little last lucky roll to kick that one ball in. There's Nicely executed. There's that kicking stick that you described. Anton's going for going for the pitching wedge. Someone's asked, "What's the prize pool?" I know it's fifteen thousand to the winner. He's got a good chance to make the eight ball here. Yeah, that's exactly what he went for. Great shot. He does jump very well for a Filipino. Usually Filipinos don't jump that well oh, yeah. because, you know, they, they've mastered the art of kicking. But um, It's a new generation now, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a new generation. He's probably the best jumper I've seen coming out of the Philippines. Jason Shaw's little moment of good luck. Not helping him much.
and Raga is going to be a, a real force to contend with in these uh, matchroom events now on the World Nine Ball Tour. He's had uh, two great finishes in the last two tournaments. Um, yeah, I don't think any players are going to be looking forward to draw him. Yeah, he's all business, isn't he? Probably plan to be a little bit straighter on this nine ball. No problem. Center of the pocket. Yeah, and here's this jump shot that got him back into this this match. He sees the eight ball hanging. Good, great. Great little jump shot. And Jason Shaw has just got to sort of sit there and meditate a little bit and be ready. It is a race to 10. You just want to make sure your opponent doesn't get to 9. Gentleman in the green shirt back there, he's the pool table technician. He... Uh, he put all the bedcloth on and leveled all the tables. I've known him for many years, yes. I had a little chit chat with him yesterday. Nice guy. Every time I come to the States, he religiously watches my match. He comes and sits right next to my match and watches it. Does he? Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. He's an Imran fan. Yeah. As am I. Oh, thank you. I'm a fan of you too now. Yeah, now that you've met me today. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, that makes it look easy, doesn't it? That's how you're supposed to break. Yeah, Raga's break has um, been more effective in this match than Jason's, got to say. And he looks actually pretty nice on this two ball to dance around the nine ball and get on the three and got, got himself a chance to get to the hill yeah and I wouldn't bet against it And he does have really good control of his cue ball. He's, I've noticed this a lot. He, he's not afraid to get close to other balls. He knows exactly the path he's going to take. Yeah, stays in line very well and close to the object ball, yeah. Almost Efron-esque in that regard, yeah. Cue ball on a string. That might become a new word that he's just invented. Efron-esque. Needs to go a little bit. Oh, nice bump. Yeah, friend, a friendly little kiss on the seven. Well. It's almost certainly going to make this nine ball and uh, get on the hill here. And if he makes another break like that, it could be curtains. But Jason is going to be sitting ready, waiting, hoping that he gets a chance and then plan on, uh, you know, running the next five out, which is not really completely unimaginable, is it? We've got a strong field, but saying that, a lot of players are at another tournament somewhere in America. 
Yeah, there's a Michigan tournament going on. Is that right, uh, Mr. G? That's right, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the top European players are there as well. I know the Polish contingent are there. And uh, maybe the Austrians like Albin and Max are there as well. So. Yeah, a lovely break. Mario, he is here. Oh, got snookered by the seven. There we go, and that's what Jason Shaw needed. Okay, we might have action. This match is not over yet. Someone's asked me, do I have a snooker table? Sheikh Ahmed, no, I don't have a snooker table. There's so many snooker clubs in London uh, on every street corner. You don't need to have one in your house. What do they call you? Is that a new nickname? Um, never heard of it. <laughs> okay. So there's a push. What does Jason do here? Does he give it back? Okay. He's I'm surprised it he would give it back. Why would? You I mean, it it's not a straightforward safety. We'll see what Anton does. Yeah, good choice by Jason. wasn't wasn't easy to execute that safe there. You'd rather be shooting this shot than have laid it. I'd rather be shooting this shot. Yeah, and now, now you can play a real good safety. You can you can weld him under the nine as well if you want. Um, you can go behind the seven. You've got options. Yeah, you can play the bank, which he went for. Pros like to attack. They have the mentality, if, if I get this shot, I could possibly yeah. win the match, not the rack, the whole match, you know, run a few racks yeah. from that shot. And, you know, it, ha it happens quite a lot. And Anton sights behind the eight. Yeah, perfectly welded. Oh, wow. Yeah, he hit that really well. Uh, Jason's got to take a flyer at this. I don't think... Uh, he can predict what's going to happen here. Not the worst outcome. Yeah, I mean, he's left a clear shot on the two. There is definitely a cut on the two all the way up. Just looking at that four, whether it tied up or not. I think it goes. Yeah, the four does go. I think he's going to go for this two. Looks yeah. like he's... Um, he makes it. He's got a good chance here. Looks like he's shaping up for the cut in the corner. Touch of left hand English. Center pocket. Nice shot. He plays with a lot of spin, Anton, from what I've seen. And he doesn't mind using an extra rail and going further to get a little bit better position. A little bit closer to his work, yeah. Yeah, so the tournament will come to a conclusion today, someone's asked. Yeah, we'll finish tonight. Yeah. Wants to maintain an angle to get on this nine, which he has done. Yeah, just two rails. Cuba will float just past the side pocket. Uh, may catch the third rail. No, that is just perfect. Thank you very much. Well, Jason Shaw made a valiant effort. Anton Raga goes through. 
to the semi-final. The quarter-final. And we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna leave the the camera on this Billy Thorpe match, um, and we'll be back in the commentary as soon as the next match starts on table one. Um, can we just uh, update them on the score? What's the score here, Mister G, in this match? Okay, uh, Billy Thorpe is down two games to Chung. Chung Yu Lang is at eight. Needs two more racks. Um, looks like Nuyuki Oi is nine three up against John Mora. Uh, Mario He is eight four up against Wu Kun Lin. And uh, we'll leave you with uh, this Billy Thorpe, Billy Thorpe match. We'll be back shortly.
All right, everybody, we are back, Mad Apple Extreme, with another match here. We got Ko Ping Chung taking on Mortiz Newhausen, uh, the Rax uh, runner-up. And uh, in the booth with me is Sim and Darren Dynamite Appleton. What's going on, guys? Hey, everybody. Yep, uh, Del Sim here, um, watching this match with uh, Maritz and Ko Ping. Ko Ping Chung, who, who I've uh, watched on the last stream as well. And happy to have Darren with me in the booth. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm very happy to be here. And we've got two young guns, two up. Well, I won't say Coping Chung's an up and coming player, but he's a very established. But Moritz, the new kid on the scene. Yeah, last month and a half, he's really blown the scene up, isn't he? I mean, all this year, took twice world junior champion, uh, now traveling uh, as, a, as a professional. I think he's uh, he's got a lot to offer. He seems to be the full package. What do you think, Daz? Definitely. Yeah. I remember watching him a couple of years ago. He actually, I think he beat Carl Boys at the World Nine Ball Championships about two or three years ago. Oh, I'm going to have to rub that one in. Yep. Yeah. Uh, might have been Carl's last tournament, so I think <laughs> Moritz might have actually retired Carl, uh, uh, finally, officially. I really hope he's listening. <laughs> yeah, he might be probably on the train to New uh, to Atlantic City. But yeah, uh, yeah, and I think that's when I really took notice of, the, uh, of Moritz and he's gone from strength to strength. And uh, recently got to the final of the Rax tournament last week. Should have won that tournament. Really. Heartbreaker, wasn't it? That's the last two yeah. now. He's gone. He's uh, he's been up eight two and lost eleven ten. But that just make him stronger because because he's young. Good experience yeah. for him. Sometimes losses like that will help you when you're young. Uh, just you learn more by losing than you do winning. I think he I think he plays all games well. You know, he's a he's an average straight pool player. Plays one pocket. You know, which is uh, not uncommon for a, a nineteen year old. From Germany, and then it helps that he hangs around with Joshua Filler, the best friends. So he's going to learn a lot, all the games, one pocket bank pool. So I'm guessing you might see him at the Derby City Classic next year. Definitely, yeah, yeah that'll be one for him. Who's a favourite? Do you think, based on establishment, uh, and... just on experience alone, I'd have to say uh, Co. Okay, but if you if we're talking on form, then I think uh, Moritz. <laughs> so it's a tough one. I think uh, I think it's. At this right, this moment in time, you'd you'd probably uh, say Moritz on farm definitely but, uh, to bet and think against coping. Chung is very difficult. Uh, I haven't seen either of them playing this tournament, so I'm not too sure how they've played. Yeah, Baby Co has been playing unbelievable. He just yeah. has that beautiful smooth stroke. The timing and everything is perfect. Yeah, he's he's gone quietly through the tournament. It's the first time I've noticed him here this week, so that means he's been very comfortable. <laughs> Yeah, I think he actually went on. Was he on the lost side? I don't know if uh, someone's got the uh, the bracket up, but maybe we could check, see if he did use one of his two lives, uh, getting through to the last 16. We are in the quarterfinals right now. No, I believe he come through the winners because I would have seen him on the loser's bracket. That's where I was. How was the conditions out there, mate? Yeah, the tables are playing great. Uh, yeah, my only, my only slight... Criticism is that the pockets are too big, right? Uh, but that's just because we have brand new tables. Obviously, yeah. got the slide. Uh, but in general, I mean, the tables do play beautiful. And it's amazing how far Razon have come. When I think a Razon ten years ago, where the tables, to be honest, were garbage, <laughs> uh, but they've just massively improved them. And that was really because the likes of myself and Jason, uh, we were sponsored by Razon from a very early stage of their infancy, and they kept asking us for feedback all the time. So yeah. that, that that was the main reason why they got the likes of me and Jason on, on board to give them as much feedback as possible, and they listened. I think you need and that though. It's the yeah, same, re definitely. same reason Diamond was successful in the early stages. Definitely, was a, yeah. it was a player feedback table, and that's what you got to do. I think uh, with any product, I think. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if the players give it good reviews, and uh, people are going to buy it, hundred percent. All right. So I just double checked. Uh, he did come through the winner side. Yeah. Yeah. So he is. Uh, he is playing well. He reminds me of uh, Adam Shaw. Remember Adam? <laughs> yeah. Kind of has the same. He's like has Adam the same Shaw. demeanor as him. Mm. Yeah, that's a name from the past. Yeah. Won one of the GB nines, didn't he? Yeah. Tier one, back in the day. He played a bad shot there. He didn't want to hit the six with a cue ball, but he did, and he's left Moritz the first opportunity. Yeah, and this is where he's just been eating up the he's eating up his opponents. He's been uh, feeding off their mistakes. Doesn't make many himself. Also a good decision maker, you know, makes the right call. 
knows when to uh, take his foot off the gas a bit. Yeah, the good, the I think the strong part of his game for someone so young is that he has really good cue ball control. Mm -hmm. You don't having you don't see him having to take long shots and pull out these massive shots just because his cue ball's so good. Uh, he has a power yeah. when he needs it though. Yeah, definitely, and he's got that in his locker also. Yeah, I agree with that. Got a slight angle on the five here. Yeah, yeah, I don't see too many problems. Okay. Yeah, just enough to hold it. That should be yeah. straightforward from here. He's switching hands too. So, another ambidextrous player. Yeah, that's a big benefit if you can do that. That's something I always never really try to practice, really, and I sort of regret it. I think, uh, you know, for the snooker fans, Ronnie O'Sullivan made it, made it more famous than what it is, you know? Mm. And then I think younger players started to practice with the left hand. Yeah. Or the opposite hand. Well, in pool, it's always been there. Uh, I just guess I'm guessing because in American pool, the most of the players that are useless were the bridge, right. so they're just uh, they've learned to play with their opposite hand or behind the back. Mm. <laughs> you never see that, would you? Yeah, like Buster Manta. Yeah, but Coe's actually baby baby Coe. Uh, he's a uh, he's unbelievable with his left hand too. His opposite side. He played a played a really good shot in his last match. Yeah, I think every player I've seen is okay with their opposite hand, except for me. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not so good with my strong hand at the moment, but yeah, it's unbelievable how many, how, uh, a lot of these guys can break and run with their opposite hand. Yeah, but you didn't need to during your dominant <laughs> side because well, the yeah, cue ball was too good. Yeah, my cue ball was decent, but also I was pretty good with the bridge. Uh, in the UK, we call it a rest, just because uh, I did play a little bit of snooker. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that I guess that's, the, the Brits are usually pretty strong with it. With a with a rake bridge, the rake. I like the rake. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's I prefer funny. that as a name. Give me the rake. We've got a nice crowd here. When I walked in about an hour ago, I thought, "Wow, uh, good atmosphere." Yeah, Had yeah. a great match with Billy Thorpe and uh, uh, Lung Lung Chang from uh, Ch uh, from Chinese Taipei. I think he was up nine two. Billy got back to nine eight, and uh, Lung managed to fall over the line. Yeah, spent the nine. There we go. Oh my god. Golden break, guys. That got uh, kicked. Definitely got kicked in there. Let me see a replay. Yeah, that's the thing what hurts it. It's my pet eight, that nine ball on the break. <laughs> I ate it, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It shouldn't count in the bottom two, I don't think. Yep. You know, if, so, if, if if it's gonna count on the break, just do the do the last foot. I mean it got cut well, in. For, for me, just because you get respotted full stop, but everyone's different. Some people love it, some people hate it. I get it for its entertainment value, right? For the layman they wanna and, mm. and the cheering aspect of it, right? But yeah, yeah. for a player because you, cause you're such a deep-rooted player, yeah. you hate to be sat in a chair and lose a rank mm. like that, don't you? He hasn't really earned it. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. It's just, uh, I, I know there's a way to break. On, uh, with this break rule, there's a way to break. And some guys are great at getting that cue ball to go back into the stack, so they give themselves the opportunity to make the nine on the break. Yeah. Like, Ruaz, in my opinion, is the best at this break. Uh, catch is good too. Catch is great. It's Mario. Shane, all these guys. So there's there's definitely a skill to the break, but how the balls land after the break for me is just pure luck. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they are being pushed around. You know, they're being. I mean, look at that again. Do you think this break format could be could be adapted? I don't know really. Uh, or do you think that after time the the pro players are just going to get used to a, a break anyway? They're going to figure it out, right? I just don't like the nine on the break because it's happening too frequent. That's the only thing I'm up against it. Uh, yeah, it's my favourite bet on the side. Because like, it? if you look at the table now, he isn't going to run out here. Or if he does, it's, it's going to be a great run out, right? So this is what I like about it, where compared to the before when we played the one on the spot and you always guarantee the ball on the break and you can control the cue ball. I mean, that was too easy at this level. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, I like the break because you get more play or you should get more play unless you're mm -hmm. very unlucky like... Uh, the guy what lost to Shane ten zero uh, leave on this morning, just very unfortunate that he yeah. happened to be the guy what's back on the back of a ten nil defeat. And Lee Van might have been the best player in the tournament, but we will never know. Right? Just the way the game is. Uh he might be thinking he, he could have won this tournament, but he just didn't get to show his skills. And that's just unfortunate. That's pull, it happens. It does. Uh, but more times than not, you're gonna get your opportunities at the table. Uh, with this break format, this is a great shot here. He if he doesn't to, make the fourth, he doesn't want to make it, and he's okay. I was going to ask you just before I didn't want to interrupt, but you know, how would would, would you have played for a bank there to, to to break out the six? You know, possibly, but he'll have had to get quite high, high on for the it, bank right? just because the the four ball, the pink four, was frozen to the rail, so it makes it a lot difficult. 
and it in and, and then he'll have had to bump into the six and seven and he wasn't guaranteed shape on the five so i'm guessing that's why he's played the safety he's played it very well but it is kickable he can use the same line that he saw the cute the the four go on yeah the other thing is that the first oh, played it great what wow, a, shot. What a shot. he's made it wow <laughs> god I mean, if that ball's over the pocket, it's a standard two-rail kick from most of the top pros, but he had to hit that cue ball on the right-hand side of the pocket as we look. And so, avoid the five. Yeah, so that made it a great shot. Yeah, nicely it, done. He might punch him behind the seven and seven and the six here. I wonder if he plays a two-way, you know, and tries to sort of break up the four, uh, break up the, the six-seven as well as play the bank. No, I don't think so. Because even if he breaks it, he's not going to get a sh he's not going to get an open shot, is he? Using the nine instead. Yeah. Smart, Just keeping it simple. I like well, your shot. Yeah, I liked the shot because he could have broke it up and just slightly yeah. and yeah. got the five up table as well. Yeah. Where this is pretty standard. They probably jumped this, you know. <laughs> yeah. So this is standard for these guys. It's just amazing how good they jump. Yeah. And these are, uh, this and the equipment helps out, especially this. This propelled Q is about 14 millimeters at the tip, you know. It's insane. I think, yeah. that, I think that's too fat. And this Q tech does jump very easy. It's Q-Tech Jump Q. I don't, what, what's, it, what's the name of the Jump Q, Dale? The Q-Tech Propel. All right. Yeah. He was signed up uh, this year, I think. You notice he kept the back on, too. That's how good these things jump. Oh, look at that. It's like, that. That's like a normal shot for him, I think. Oh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they, they, they practice it like they practice the break. Like me, I'm just worried about getting over the nine ball. There. He's just worried about the nine ball. Just make contact. <laughs> He's also quite tall, mate. You know, you're... Oh, yes, You're not the really. tallest power. Well, these guys practice their jumps probably an hour a day. I mean, no one ever did that before. Does he spin off the rail here? Hit rail first? Yeah, he might play rail first, try and get behind the nine. Yeah, I like this shot. Very under underutilized, I think. It's got it's it's a, a bit, bit too thin. Too thin, yeah. Would have got by the nine normally. And he's left the bank. Yeah, the bank's on. Got to be careful. These rails are playing short because i missed a couple like this yesterday uh short so you've got to tell yourself just to hit it a little bit wider yeah. and he did wow how good uh co-playing my god yeah and it's a big rack even though it's early in the match uh two one and three zeros uh, at this level is quite big yeah it's huge um, i happened with my match yesterday i should have gone up three zero i didn't and uh, ends up costing me the match really yeah, it's tough, mate. I mean, it's a it's a very tough field, anyway. Yeah, that's why you can't. You you got to get when you got them early early stages. Of these matches are very important. If you can get off to a good lead, mm -hmm. like three zero, it makes a huge difference, especially in these races. Yeah, hundred percent. Or two one, and then then the guy breaks and runs. It's two two, and then you, you're back to square one. Yeah, just a reminder on the rules: it is single elimination. So from this last sixteen, is a thirty second shot clock as well. Uh, being managed by the referee and you can see there they've uh, enclosed the arena for this final four table set up yeah got quite a big crowd i'd probably say there's a good hundred <coughs> hundred people here for sure maybe more yeah i think they're at capacity they've been turning people away at the door yeah i believe so yeah yeah, you've got to be careful with the fire code around here. Yeah, I noticed when I arrived on the, in the car, I couldn't get in the car park, so I had to park at uh, Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug for them. <laughs> <laughs> that helps that they're close, doesn't it? I saw Chris Mellon next door. <laughs> How comes he's not over? He's next door at Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a different table. <laughs> I think he's actually flying today. He had an exhibition last night in Cardiff. Oh, okay. Oh, he's get, getting in it. An extra bit of pocket money. Yeah, I think he flies. He arrives today. Fair enough. For the US Open. Is he going straight there, is he? Yeah, I think uh, I think most players fly to Philadelphia, don't they? And they, they get the train mm -hmm. or hire a car. It's about an hour from Philadelphia. I I've noticed that Coe's been putting the brake a little bit wider. Yep. He's going right to the edge of the box. You want to tell people why they do that? Is he trying to shorten it or widen it? Yeah, I think a lot of it is uh, he, they're not hitting them that hard. That's the first, first thing I do notice. And what they're playing like a delayed, a, sorry, a delayed draw right. when they're breaking. They're accelerating through the cue ball and they're really letting their cue follow through and hold out there longer uh, instead of just snapping or punching the break. Mm -hmm. 
which are, a lot of us can have the tendency to do where you just hit the break or punch it. These guys are just softly drawing through the ball and accelerating through the cue ball that little bit longer. And, and it seems to just just get that delayed draw on the cue ball. So that's why you're seeing the cue ball arc back into the stack. So it, it's quite difficult. I've been uh, trying to practice it a lot lately and I still haven't got it down. Where you watch uh, Francisco Ruaz do this break, it's just unbelievable. He's so consistent, isn't he? He gets that cue ball to arc every time and it's coming off the same spot off the rail. I mean, that's so hard to do, it's unbelievable. But he played it great there, uh, Chung. And he he was very unfortunate with a leave. And this just to show you how good they are with the jump cue. I mean, I won't even contemplate playing that <laughs> jump shot there. That's after the break. Yeah, he's I not mean, he had so many about... options there to push out. Yeah. And he decides to jump it as if he's pro. He's like he played it as if he's pro, like supposed to make supposed it. to make it. <laughs> he's, he's lost the game because of it. I mean, I would never play that shot. <laughs> you know, not in a million years, eh? But that's the that's the development in the game, like you were talking about. It's a it's a different style now. Yeah, yeah, that's a new generation. Yeah, you got to change your style of play a little bit. I guess it's like most sports, really. You just you got to go with the what's what's happening right now. Very few grinders left in the game, isn't there? Because of the equipment, I think yeah. I put it down to the equipment. Because the jump shot, the 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 equipment for the jump cues and the break cues are so much better. The balls are better, the cloths are better. Uh, it's so it's just a different game. style of play now. It's a faster, more aggressive game, isn't it? Mm. And they're all technically better now because, uh, obviously, in general, the pockets are smaller than what they've ever been. Where back in the old days, they play on five-inch pockets with those uh, thick cloths, uh, so dirty you, balls, mm, uh, and the equipment was not as good. So it was just a different style of game. You required a stroke, didn't you? Yep. You just and they had like a windy stroke, like a Buster Mighty style stroke. Uh, where now it's just completely changed. It's just that they're all like robots now. Yeah, uh, I, I have to agree. And uh, I think that Moritz has got the benefit of both. I think he he has the good fundamental, but also understands, I think, American Paul for its physics. Big time. I mean, just watch him play. Look at his stroke. I mean, yeah. these aren't a lot. These aren't, this is a good stroke to teach the young kids. Like, look at it. It's just everything's perfect. Uh, his hand position from the cue ball is perfect. Yeah. And he's he's going through smoothly. There's no movement, and that's the key. You're always looking for that movement. Is it that shoulder drop, yeah. or the head lifting before you hit the ball? And we've all been guilty of that. But with uh, with him, it's very limited. Yeah, and you got to say the same with Filler. You know, that's why Filler has uh, so much so much success because his mechanic is so good. Yeah, we could be looking at yeah uh, the two players from Germany. I mean Joshua and Moritz in years to come been a big dominant force in the likes of the World Cup of Pool, uh, the World Team Championships and stuff like that where there's uh, two players and a woman. <laughs> and if you've got his wife, yeah. who's improving all the time also, Pia. Yeah, she just won a big championship, didn't they? They both won the same, ladies yeah. and men's. Uh, no, she lost in the semifinals. Oh, was it lost? Okay. But yeah, still a great result. Hello, she's, she's getting there, you know what I mean? She's getting up there with the best players in the world. You'd have to say she's top eight player in the world now. So that's a... Uh, and. You, we all know how strong the Asian gills are. Yeah, definitely. And the likes of Kelly, they're, they're going nowhere. But it's like you said, you know, she's being coached. She's got a great, great setup where she is. Unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you, you get to practice with uh, Joshua Filler, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, since Ephraim Reyes and Strickland is the best rotation player I've ever seen. Remember, you uh, you kind of guided him a bit. Uh, yeah, I got, I got great, him to the World Pool Series very quickly. Uh, I remember that over here yeah. in uh, Steinway, right? Yeah, I wish I kept hold of him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you see where he's gone from just strength to strength, don't you? Unbelievable. Yeah, I've never. Oh, I might not. Have, uh, he's people. He probably is probably the best straight ball, uh, best rotation player. You know, player you know what I love too is he has the character. He loves. No, he, 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 he plays. He plays the part of the villain, but off the table, oh, yeah. he's nothing like that. So I, I love him. Good... I love him. Me. I think. Uh, I think. Yeah. I just love his character, the way he plays the game. His stroke, his confidence, how good he is under yeah, pressure. So aggressive. I mean, who, who are you going to pick over him to, to play that spot shot for you if you've got to save your life? <laughs> and there's no one. It's true. In history, in, in I my might, opinion. I might pick Moritz now, though, tell you that. Well, yeah, but he's got to prove it. You still need to, can yeah. he really do it under that big spotlight? It's like Fedor, as good, as great as what he is. He still needs to win, do it on that big stage for me. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm convinced he will do, but he's still got to win those big matchroom events before... I put him in the same category as uh, Phil and Francisco. Did he, did he win the World Nine Ball at all? Yeah, it was when it was in a when pool was, room uh, in Qatar. Qatar, right? Where 
uh, no disrespect, but it wasn't uh, the first few years in Qatar. Empty the stadium, right? The, Empty arena. No, but it was a good production back then. All the tables were streamed. There was, even though the arena was like a, what five, six thousand seater arena, but there might be seven hundred people yeah. there, so it felt empty. It feels mm -hmm. looks empty, uh, but it was actually a good tournament in the early days. And then the last couple of years, they had it in the pool room, which is like ridiculous. Yeah, for a world championship, no disrespect to the pool rooms out there, but to have a world championship in a pool room is a bit uh, tatty, let's say. Uh, flawed. Yeah, and uh, flawed. so yeah, it's even yeah. though it's a great title to win, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of pressure. Don't get me wrong, uh, but doing it in that big matchroom arena like the US Open for example wow uh, wow 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 or the World Masters and that's the big test you got a bit lucky there you mm. hit that one bad yep I agree with you on that front um, there's a few people saying that he shoots like Fedor only faster mm. I think Fedor can kind of get caught up his own mechanics sometimes yeah could almost be too perfect you know or try and be too perfect he reminds me of a young Johnny Archer as Fedor I mean I have no doubt he's going to be He's going to be multiple world champion. He's going to win US Opens. But yeah. until you actually do it, I mean, he has done it, obviously, won a world championship. So I'm not discrediting his title. No, of course. It's just the the uh, setting. It's just a setting for me. Mm -hmm. Like, he still hasn't played a Moscow in a cup with a crowd yet. Right. right. So we'll find out probably this year how he deals with that. Where we saw with Francisco last year, he didn't play amazing in the Moscow, he? Right. But he didn't play terrible either. But this year will be his big test uh, to see... See how he yeah. handles the Moscone. I think uh, people are expecting big things from Moritz every time he steps into the room now. Oh, this kid, yeah. Yeah, you're just kind of like, you know, switching up on, on, on this guy. And I know we're more like a, a podcast right now than a <laughs> than a match commentary, but it's good to hear from yeah. people like Darren that, that dominated an era and has been, you know, world champion, has been, um, you know, Masters champion, multiple titles over the years. Yeah. Yeah, Moritz, is, uh, he's got everything going on for him, really. He's, uh, and he's a good kid, good attitude. Very mature. Very well spoken, actually. His English is really good. Yeah, it's another another credit to the you know the Germans that they learn business English from a very young age as part of their schooling. Yeah, and he steps into the shop every time, more or less consistently, does the, the same routine over and over again. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of people can learn from uh, Moritz's uh his setup and his and his stroke. He's relentless as well. You know, when he when he gets in front, he very rarely takes his foot off the gas in it. And I don't think he does anything stupid. You know, I think he makes the game look very simple. Mm. That was probably the the worst error he's made so far in the match. Yeah, got away with it, obviously. But he's just going to keep gaining confidence all the time. Uh, obviously, he's young. He's still mm. probably at times where he's probably a little bit shaky and everything else. But with experience and wins you just gain more confidence and then that helps you under pressure seems to control it well doesn't he like you said he's a gentleman off the table you know, talks to everybody oh, old yeah. young signs of autographs yeah and he's good looking as well so uh, that's going to help him well with the ladies <laughs> well that might hinder him not actually just ladies but sponsorship i was thinking more on the sponsorship <laughs> side but obviously dell's british he's uh yeah we're a we're a bad bunch <laughs> Doesn't hurt to to have a decent visage, mate, does it? Yeah, someone put. Uh, I, I think Fedor wishes shot like Moritz. I think Fedor does shoot like Moritz. It's just a different style. Yeah, very much so. I don't um, think anyone shoots much better than Fedor, if if anybody. Would you say the competition is more difficult in this era than it's been in previous years or decades? There's more better players. Yeah. Where before, I mean, when I was successful, I'd probably say I looked at the field and I thought it's probably 15, 20 players. Right. right, where now I look at the field, I think there's 30, 40, 50. Yeah, that could I think all compete. There's, I think there's 60 players who can beat anybody on the day right now. That's, that, for me, is just an insane stat. So, you know? yeah, the, you've got your consistent players like Filler and Ruaz and Shane, all right. those guys. There's probably 10 of them. There's probably 10 guys where you think, well, yeah, they're probably finishing the top 16 of virtually every tournament. Right. Uh, but then there's another 50 guys who can beat anybody on a one-off match. For example, like a Chris Mellino. Uh, As an exhibition player yeah. type style, you know. No, he's... I mean, it's just that you know if uh, you go into a match with Shane Bambone and if, if your game's right and everything rolls for you at that particular time, you can win. You, you can win. Uh, but the problem is that can you beat Shane Van Bonen? Then you can beat can you beat Francisco Ruaz in the next round and yeah. then beat Fedor in the round after that? That's the problem. So in a one-off match right now, 
Uh, Odds are all over the place. 50, 60 something. guys who can beat each other, but there's only like about 10, 10, or, 10 or 12 guys, in my opinion, who can, who, who can win it back to back to back matches interesting that, that's um, a difference really. I, I fully agree with you there mate and uh, that's why i kind of asked the question because i think there's so much talent on the tour right now and, and the opportunity is there for them to earn money hmm. and to be a professional in this game so interesting that code took a break there you know quite early on in the match yeah he kind of might have might is he do you think he's trying to take moritz out of rhythm oh definitely just uh he's actually his brother did it against me i was five one down against coping i got back to five five he took a break he, but he took it at the right time they look too innocent though to pull a to pull a little tactical <laughs> well it's not out. a move it's a tactical timeout which is allowed so you got to take advantage of that and yeah, obviously true. you want to break up play don't you, you when once you lose the momentum and you only get one timeout, right is it just one yeah i think so and momentum's massive at this level of course uh because uh, Chung knows that if he wins the next rack, he's breaking. It's far too when he's breaking. It's it's game on again. I mean, look at that. It didn't look didn't look difficult, but playing that yeah. with your opposite hand yeah, and then unbelievable. getting perfect, you know. Whereas if we, me and you would be playing with the rest, yeah, it makes you feel sick, really. It does, doesn't it? I think like I need to be twenty <laughs> years younger again and restart. <laughs> let's let's relearn myself. Restart. New eyes, <laughs> new legs, new heart, everything. Well, I've got, I've got a newish heart. A newish heart. <laughs> I, like that I just one. hope this one holds up like it did 10 years ago. I had to get one heart joke in there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you're still breathing. Just don't die on me, right? Only just. It's, it, it's helped. It's it, helped. He's it, getting some help. <laughs> and that's all the heart take. They're playing this game. <laughs> Yeah, we are down to the quarterfinal stages, guys. So Jason is out, lost the last match. Um, so we're going to go through fairly quickly. I think the, uh, the yeah, final is actually tabled for 8 p.m. this evening. Race to 10. Yeah, race to 10 right now. Final will be race to 13. Like that shot there, you great example of staying down on the shot. Because those little half ball cuts, they're very missable if you jump up. Or any movement, so just keeping still on the shots on those type of shots will, will really help you. It's got a bit funny here, though. He's gonna have to stretch. I wonder if he's just gone to get his extension. Well, I'm surprised he's not using his opposite hand, right? As good as he's been playing with it, he did play the previous one very similar to this. He's yeah. put the extension on, yeah. It feels like he can just lean over, yeah. And, he, and he's and he's and he's quite tall. I'm yeah, guessing yeah. he's still got growing pains. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, wow, I nearly missed it. Yeah, he's six feet. I think he's around about the six foot mark. Or just under. Yeah, oh, slightly overcut that ball. Yeah, he's still, I mean, it's it's actually helped him, isn't it? Yeah, but he's next week he wouldn't get away with it. So we'll have to bear down. But it is easy to be a little bit lazy on some shots when Agreed. the pockets are playing generous. Well, in about three or four days, these tables will tighten up mm -hmm. just because they'll have been played in, and then I think they'll play perfect. I mean, at the moment, uh, Shane says he feels like he's playing on a bar box. Yeah. And you see him playing, he had that seven pack. Yeah, the way he's playing, he looks like a bar box, yeah. But, um, to me, it looks like a snooker table. <laughs> <laughs> 12 feet long. <laughs> that Teng's played well, different. though. Teng's come back on him um, by the looks of it, if we're just looking at the scores. Oh, yeah. He's only four to three up, so he hasn't really dominated like he has with other it's players. Like Mario, I didn't realize he was here. I didn't realise Mario was here and he's in the quarterfinal. That's unbelievable. How did you not see him? <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> so, yeah, 2-2 two, two against Nahoki Hoy. He's having a good tournament. He's playing well. He's beat a lot of great players in this tournament, Nahoki Hoy. And yeah. Raga just doing his thing. Raga just burst onto the scene in America. But for you guys what didn't know him, I've known him a long time. And the talent has always been there. He just hasn't been able to travel until now, really. Until really. recently, yeah. There's a few like that in the Philippines, yeah. aren't there, that just well, don't get visas or back in? Well, there's one in the Philippines, and they reckon he's the best out of a lot of them, and uh, nobody's seen him yet. What's his name? I don't know. I can't I can't remember his name because I've got short-term memory loss, but I will find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it scares me. It scares well, yeah. me how good some of those guys are. When Raga just burst onto the scene, and he's now number two in the Fargo rating. Yeah, there'd be someone watching, I'm sure, who knows who I'm talking about, and they're raving about this guy in the Philippines. He's only young. Like 18. Oh, really? And they all reckon he's the best player over there, in, including Raga and all these guys. So if oh, someone's got his name, just pop it on the chat. It's quite one of them names what's not easy to pronounce, so I'm you'll, not even going to try. You'll know it when you see it, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I know it when I see it. And it's like Raga, and he's like, uh, yeah, he's, he's a funny little character. He's, uh, he's got a personality. Yeah, he is. And yeah. he wants to win so badly. Yeah, 
if uh, Raga gets sponsored, he's, you know, there's no reason why he shouldn't. You see that soft draw? It's slightly you've got to you've got to tell yourself to overcut the break, which is very hard to do, I think. Uh, yeah, because you don't want to slide doing. past it, do you? You don't. Yep. I mean, if you if you hit the break too thin, you lose that cue ball. But what I've told myself after this time is that no matter what, make sure you make the one ball on the break, and then just keep control of the table. You can't be giving up the table like right. I have this time, really. You so can't be coming up dry on this break. How often in in your day did you push into a jump? Very rare, really. Very rare, right? Depends who you're playing against, don't it? I mean, if you're playing against Efren, you might push into an easy jump, right? Just put it behind the nine ball, for example. Because that's what I've noticed they've started to do okay, a lot see. more. He's pushing into a jump, see? No, is it the thing? Or even a half ball, maybe. Oh, he's left it. Yeah, but... I mean, it depends who your opponent is. So when people say you don't play the opponent, I think that's nonsense. Of course uh, you do. Because, yeah, when the balls are open, you 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 play against yourself. You're running the rack. But in these situations, you're definitely playing your opponent. You gotta think. You gotta figure out their strengths or weaknesses, or try and figure out their strengths and weaknesses while you're playing against them. Shots that they're refusing. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I obviously, I've played these guys so many times. I sort of know what their strengths and weaknesses are. So, if I'm going to play into a jump, I mm -hmm. really think about who I'm playing against. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do it against someone that's just going to whip out the cue straight away, do you? Yeah. Or if you're playing against a great shot maker, and then mm -hmm. you think, right, do I really want to leave him this long shot? But then if you're playing someone who's not a great shooter, mm -hmm. then you might dangle them the carrot. So there's a, there's all sorts of uh, aspects yeah, to probably. consider when you're jumping or playing safe. Like it is. I mean, surely he's got to put him back. Yeah, this is too tough. You, you're putting into a blind pocket. You know, yes, the, it does afford some... Um, some advantage if he makes it, but he's got to make a hell of a shot, isn't he? Yeah, I don't know how much he can see of this two ball. He might even go for it. I think he has to. Or what he, is he just thinning or off it? overcut it and come around the back of the three and try and get behind the nine, just like this. So, yeah, he's played it perfect. Wow, oh, wow. Shot. Jesus. That might be the shot of the match so far for me. Yeah, definitely. He's left an edge, though, uh, or a small jump edge. Mm, yep. I don't think he's quite got an edge unless he massaged it a little bit. But he's got straight for his jump cue. There's no hesitation. <laughs> no, <and it's>, uh, <laughs> that's what we're just like, talking about. He's like the walk around with their jump cue in the back pocket these days. I mean, that's that's a really good shot. Yeah, that was a really good call as well. And he's a little unlucky that the two ball kissed the four. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's, he's probably 70% is... to make it, isn't he? <laughs> I don't know. You're risking missing it. That's the problem. And the nine's that's moving. Why nine's moving. moving. Nine's moving. Wow, look at this. Oh, look at this. Oh. <laughs> 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 if that goes, you're sick as a dog. Well, if you? that nine ball was closer to the pocket, he might he might have considered trying to attack it here as a two way shot. But I think he, yeah, there might be a gap here, you know, between the there eight is a and gap. the six, which yeah, is incredible. You can see it really. on this one. Yeah, well, it's not easy, but it looks like it goes. Yeah, I, I think he'll. No, he's not going to attack the nine. He's just going to play the uh, play the shot. Yeah, and I knew it wasn't easy, but he's been a little bit fortunate there, to be honest. Very fortunate, I think. Well, he's done well to not double kiss that eight ball, really. Yeah, how's that not got? That's what I'm yeah. saying. It looked like it hit it fat, didn't it? Uh, so this is really the game ball. If he gets decent shape on the pink four. Has he got to dig it, or do you think you can roll it around? Yeah, so it's like he's rolling it. Yeah, he Played had enough. Because those shots good. Wow. Wow. Another one I think is a little bit fortunate, but... Yeah, I'm, a, I'm very surprised that he didn't double kiss the eight ball here. I didn't think it would drop, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I think the eight ball was just off the rail a little bit. That helped him. He, he can really get into the cue ball. He might play for the five into the nine pocket. There you go, mate. Kyle Amaroto. Does that sound right? That's the one. Kyle Amaroto. Amaroto. Yeah. Remember that name, folks? Yeah. 19. Remember that name right there? Tiffany's my good fact checker. I like Tiffany yeah, in the in the Carl chat. Amaroto is the guy. What everyone's talking about in the Philippines. So world champion next four years. I want to sun him vaguely, but let's see if he even plays a world championship. The right. problem you've got is that it's not easy for these guys to get visas. Yeah, that's true. But someone like that, you know, they'd make the effort, right? Move, move. Yeah, you would uh, think so. Yeah, I'm guessing we're sure. I'm pretty sure we'll see him on. On the international scene sooner or later. Yeah, I mean, better got a green card. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's different for Europe. I mean, yeah, it's different for Europeans. Uh, yeah, very much. Uh, obviously, there's been problems with Russia, but I think Fedor was already on the ball before 
Yeah. Everything's kicked off what's been kicking off. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's very, very difficult, as we've seen with Dennis Ocolo and guys like that, for the Filipinos, just because it's, uh, it's, it's a poor country, isn't it? So. Yeah, very tough. That's why we've not seen him in the States. Yep, and he's uh, six Morris is flying here. Wow. And we haven't seen much of Chung play, really. It's not. I'm not sat here thinking, oh, he's playing bad here. Maybe just a couple of, uh, you know, decision, error, de de decision errors or, you know, the jump shot he played was pretty loose. I know there's another tournament going on at the same time here in uh, Michigan. And that's why I, <laughs> there's probably three players <laughs> not here, what you probably consider in the top eight in the world. But the problem you've got is that there's 20 world champions here uh, to make up for that. <laughs> <laughs> and every time it's the same. There's always players missing from a tournament, and people say, "Yeah, but so and so was not there." I says, "Well, that, that's a, that's been the same for the last fifteen, twenty years. There's always players missing from a tournament." Yeah, through through one reason or another. Yeah, but you still got to beat twenty five other world champions anyway, so it's just as tough or strong. I mean, it's like Joshua Filler's not here, but you don't really notice it because there's there's still loads of world champions still here. Formats are different too. You know, yeah. I I prefer the longer races. You wow, know, so if I had nice. to pick a if I had to pick an event, I would pick the one with you know the race to nine versus the race to four for instance you know yeah and uh, obviously the big the big carrot for most of the players here is the matchroom rankings correct and also it's just down the road from the next tournament yeah now they've had two or three good tournaments back to back haven't they and plus it's jason the 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 tournaments uh hosted by jason shaw so that's a big kicker also chef chef shaw <laughs> so the players want to <laughs> support his pool room and support him Obviously, he's a very popular figure on the pool scene. Yeah, he's a character. Isn't he? Wherever you go, he's there. You just He's one of those guys. Wherever you go, he's there. You don't <laughs> have to look for him. Even if you're in Vegas, in the middle of nowhere, or in a big casino, and there's like thousands of people. You can hear him. <laughs> you you see him or bump into him somehow. <laughs> it's like there's like 10 Jason Shaws in Las Vegas or something. Did you say a few years back he was one of the hardest workers, you know, in terms of oh, yeah, yeah. He, could, he could just play on the table 10 hours a day and, and yeah. not, not feel it? Yeah, he used to never be off the table. It's like most of these young guys are the same, though. Uh, and Jason was one of those. He just probably a little bit less these days, but he still puts enough work in to compete. To compete, that's right. But he does have other interests away from pool now, which is good, and that's what you need, especially when you get to your 30s. You need a business, don't you? Yeah. He needs a retirement plan. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't last forever. Ho's got to turn the screw. Um, I think he's got to finish these now. I can't. I don't think he can afford too many more mistakes. Yeah, he's got to play more or less perfect pull from now on, and he's capable of doing that, and he's done it before, so he knows he can do it. He won't be panicking. Six one, you know, six two, get the break. Do you think, um, just because of the six to the seven, do you think he entertains the six nine? The six nine. Mm. Do you think I he think, entertains it, or do I you think, think it's fairly easy to get six seven? Definitely entertains it, but I don't he's think he's landed side, good on the five. I think he probably played to do that, but he's come a little bit straight on the five here. Yeah, well, obviously, his cue ball's so good, the seven does go in the side and it goes in one of the corners, or even the opposite side middle. So it depends what angle he leaves there. Yeah, another one that can just switch hands at will. Look at this here. Leaves a bigger angle than what you would think he would leave, but he's not worried about that. I think he'll play it for the middle. Or will he, come, will he, will he try and hug the left side? I think this is a safer option, playing the right-hand side as we look at the seven, because then you're guaranteed a shot on the seven. Yeah. If you come down the left-hand side where he's standing, if you over it that ball, you can you can get funny or snooky yourself. Yeah, he played the open table, right? Yeah, and yeah, I mean, this should be no problem for him. He just roll forward. Yeah, this is nice. He needed to take that opportunity. Can't let Moritz have it all his own way. Yeah, it's amazing how time flies. I remember playing uh, Coping Chung in 2009 at the World Ten Ball Championships. I drew him in the first round. I think he was about 12 then. <laughs> and I beat him like 9 8. And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ. I hope uh, I'm not going to see him too much. That's like filler, wasn't it? What was filler when he first joined the Euro Tour? Was Same he 11? Thing, yeah, but I mean, coping Chung, I mean, he was so small, it was unbelievable. It was frightening. <laughs> the queue was bigger than him, and I'm, I'm like, struggled to beat him, and I was on top of my game then. 
I'm thinking, wow, this this kid's unbelievable. That's why I always say yeah. experience can beat youth sometimes. Well, yeah, maybe on that occasion, but 14 years later, here he is, and he still doesn't look much different. True. Yeah, I'm guessing he's, what, like 30 years old now? Yeah, he's, no, never he's, believe he's, it, he's, no, he's no more than that. <laughs> I mean, he, he could still be 12, I don't know. Yeah, I must mean, be nice. Be never, never a shaven life. I tell you. Fourteen years. Yeah, I'm guessing he's he's got to be late twenties, thirty years old. Has to be. I mean, how old uh, Pin uh, Copenhagen? Yeah, he's, he's like sort of late thirties, right? No, mid thirties. No, no. I'd probably say 30, 33 to thirty-five. Okay. Yeah, because I remember playing him back in them days. He was early, probably early twenties. They've made themselves a good brand, haven't they? Oh yeah, you know, they're, they're funny of, as well. They're, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're funny. They're funny without realizing it. Yeah, Chung is uh, but, 28. Yeah, just the way how they act and their demeanor and everything. They're, they're great. And they're doing their videos. I don't think they're trying to be funny. They just naturally come across that way, <laughs> it's come especially across. towards Westerners. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite, they're entertaining to watch. Yeah, and they're, they're really nice people. They're very polite. Oh, and you never good. see any issues with them. You know, on the table, there's mm -hmm. never no issues. Or oh, he's bad call, or he's done this, or he's Respectful tried to pull a him. move. There's never had any issues, never seen any issues with either of them. And and their brother, their young brother, who was actually a really good dart player. Is it Copenhagen? You know, Copenhagen, right? Copenhagen, yeah. He was like a semi-professional dart player. Really? Yeah, but I think because he wants to spend so much time with his brothers, because they're all three of them are glued to the hip. <laughs> uh, they might be uh, triplets. <laughs> <laughs> triplets uh, born apart. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think he just wants to be with his brothers, so I think that's why he stopped playing darts. I, I got him wrong, but Baby Co, Little Co, <laughs> and Big Co, right? <laughs> yeah. That's them. Yeah. <laughs> and they actually all three of them look a little bit different. So you Would won't you? really think, oh, these three are brothers. Yeah, you might. It's, uh, yeah, because of the air. Because of the air. <laughs> the air style. Yeah, someone said he'd brushed his hair today, so he's, he's playing better. What would you do here, Daz? Well, he's pushed out, so he's left the edge of the two. Can he bank it across and get the cue ball down table? Right. Right, so he's pointed his cue ball near the four and the eight here, so... I'm not too sure what he's going to play here. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm about to learn something. Unless he's really spinning the cue ball. That looks difficult to do that. Oh, he did do it. Wow, nice shot. I didn't think that was quite there. Yeah, I just learned uh, something. I'll tell you what, that was, he's, he, he's rather been very, very unlucky, which I think he has. <laughs> God. <laughs> I mean, that's just brutal if he's left that gap there. I mean, he's played that. With with the slide on the table, he's played that mm. shot perfectly, hasn't he? And he had to play at that speed to get it down there. Right. So he's... He didn't quite know where the two ball... He, he was actually probably half-heartedly trying to make the two off the two rails also. Yeah, half-heartedly, I get it. And I think he's been brutally unlucky here if he's left his shot. And he has, a, I'm pretty sure he has. So I mean, he, that's very unfortunate. Moritz is already looking where he wants a cue ball, so he's actually yeah. going to jump this. Yeah, slight, slightly jumping. And then For these guys, that's not a problem. Withdraw? <laughs> you kidding me? Might scratch. Wow. No, he's okay. Get, he's get lucky. Got lucky, but the four doesn't pass the eight. And what's the angle on the three like? Yeah, true. He might have to play a carom or a combination on the four eight or play safe after the, after the three. Well, this is where you need a little bit of luck. On on another day, if things are not going your way, you're scratching the corner there. Do you make? Uh, do you just roll this in and maybe play the carom on the eight? Possibly, but it looks like, it looks like the carom's a lot of distance, but it depends how you're feeling, I think. It looks, I mean, it looks like it was, it's sitting nice if the cue ball sits on the right line. Uh, I think you, this is safety coming up, right? There's definitely no carom. Well, it's a combo now, isn't it? The combo's probably, I don't know, depends how good you are at them. Just some people are great at them, some people not so great. I don't think it offers much positional value, though. But he does have good safety. He can roll forward, get the four, maybe up table, the cue ball behind the eight. It's an under-practice shot, this stun forward. Or you can just stun it forward. Yeah, he's played it safe, and he's played it bad. Ooh. No good. Because the key oh. to that shot is to make sure you get the cue ball. The overhead looks like he's got it. I don't think he's got it, but it, the the pink four doesn't pass the seven, right. and I don't think he can see enough of it to cut it in the middle, which is uh, not probably not the shot anyway. I've so seen, he's I've, either got the cut into the top right as we look on our screens, I've which he's looking at. I've seen Co absolutely rip these in and get get perfect shape on the six. And uh, tough shots these are, but oh my so again, God. just made it look easy. Oh and believe God, me, they're geez. not easy. <laughs> uh, I can't I can't even see that shot no more. 
Oh, I, I can see it. I just can't play it. <laughs> yeah, execute. <laughs> <laughs> he played it like as if it's, it's just, just a hanger. It's a right. big favourite to make that shot. See, yeah, I, thought he was gonna, shot. I thought he was going to draw on off the rail. He actually went forward. Played it perfect. Played it with a high ball. Hmm. Well, that's all the hours of practice, that is. Yeah. And having good fundamentals. Having good siblings that are like yeah. the Bargos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the same as like the the Pia filler and Josh filler stuff, right? Hit that one for me. Oh, yeah, God. and this is game game on again, Dell. It is, isn't it? He's back in the he's back in the hunt. He's feeling it. And Moritz really is. Uh, he hasn't made many mistakes. Made maybe one error. That's maybe his first or second error. Crazy. You're getting asked a question there by Laura. She said, "Do you like the use of jump cues, Des?" Oh, yeah, that's a great question, a great debate. What's going on in the pool world for quite some time now? My take on it, I don't know what yours is, Dell, is that I think it should be a little bit like tennis where you get free challenges. And I think pool should be the same where we get free jump shots per match, mm -hmm. per match, not tournament. Because uh, then it brings a different element to the game. It brings more talking points to the game. Agreed. You're going to see all skills of the game. You're going to see more kicking, players having to learn more kicking and all that stuff. But you're going to use your jump shots wisely where to me the equipment's too good, right? Where it's just so easy to jump now, even for someone like me who was never, oh, I, I was never <laughs> a jump shot player, right? But now I've had to become a jump shot player because otherwise you get left behind. And I think the equipment's too easy. I'd love to see it where, and you can have it on the screen where oh, he, he has like the, the uh, three beats at the at the bottom of your name. The and three it says dots like or something, yeah. You, you, you have one left or two left. And that brings a good talking point. Oh, will, will he use a jump cue or not? And I think that would be some, a, a good introduction to the game. I've got to agree with you. You were one of the first pioneers to kind of test out you know, the you are only allowed to jump if uh, your opponent hooked you, oh, yeah, yeah. right? I forgot about that. <laughs> At the WPS, the World Pool Series, yeah, yeah, you yeah. couldn't. If you put yourself in a hook, mm. if you if you caused the, you mm. know the safe, you weren't allowed to use a jump. Yeah. But if your opponent put you in, yeah, I thought that was a great variation. Yeah, people loved it. They did, but it never really took never took hook. I don't know what, what that, nobody's ever listened to me. <laughs> but I do like that element. I think that that could work on TV. You know, it could TV extra yeah. extra bit of pressure. Well, you have to keep the jump cue because of the manufacturers. Yeah, you do. There's too much money in. There's too much money in the in the, the so jump many, industry. Let's say so many variations and tips and chalk and everything, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, and you got to think of the products, and you got to think of the manufacturers who do put a lot of money into the game. Even Agreed. though, uh, obviously, eventually we. We have to look after the people that look after the the game and the players, right? But obviously, eventually, we want to get corporate sponsors and Agreed. major sponsors like Nike and all them lot. But that's in the future. But we still need all these Q manufacturers because without the Q manufacturers, we're all screwed. Basically, yeah, agreed. Literally, because we would have no Q <laughs> unless you start making them yourself. But they're invested as well. And they invest a lot of money in the game. Uh, yeah, the, the the Q. I've got I've got respect for all Q manufacturers because because I'm I've started to get involved a little bit on that side. So you realise the work what goes into uh, these things. It's just amazing. Do you see the shot he played prior there? I think he actually broke out the five. I think it goes now. Yeah. So you can see he's got a little spring in his step. But you got to be careful with these shots when they are tight. It's so easy to not just focus on making the five ball because mm -hmm. that eight balls in your high line. So you got to really bear down and think, right, just make the five in the middle of the pocket. Don't think about anything else. Yeah, I agree with you. Because you'd be amazed how many times you see uh, amateurs end up hitting the eight ball there. Or Cause, flick the... Because they're worried about it. Or flick the near jaw, yeah. overcutting it. Or overcut it, yeah. Yeah, no, I've got to agree with you, mate. Have you got your own line of cues coming out with Tiger or...? Uh, yes and no. Yes and <laughs> I've no. got my own line of cues coming out, but it'll be next year. Okay. Uh, but they're not made by Tiger, but uh, I will be with Tiger still. Okay. Uh, but I'm just bringing my own line of cues out. Uh, I'll have like five or six different uh, models, so I'm really excited about that. Oh, congrats, mate. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, a bit of low range, but be average between 100 to to $600, so uh, very affordable. It's a cue for everyone nowadays, isn't there? 200 yeah. up to 20000 Yeah, well, I think the way I look at it is that uh, you've got, People in the in the game spending crazy amounts of money on equipment, but mm -hmm. they don't pay money to get a lesson, right. which doesn't make sense to me. 
Uh, so that it should be the other way. Get a lesson first and get to a decent level and then decide what's uh, how much you want to spend on equipment, really. I think that the game has changed slightly, and, I, and I'll say this because in this era of YouTube and things like this, there's so much content available online that some players, you know, don't get in-person coaching anymore. And I'm actually a big advocate of watching as much as possible, you know. So whenever I'm alone or, you know, the missus goes out and uh, it's uh, I'm watching on YouTube, I'm watching the available content. You know, I'm probably about 10,000 hours in just watching Paul right now. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's unbelievable. Because I think you can content. learn. You can learn from me. And this is why people are tuned in. It's not. I learned. I learned watching YouTube, watching right. uh, all these great instructors like, uh, is it Tor? Tor, what's his name? <laughs> I can't remember his last name. I really like his stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. The Russian guy. Uh, there's there's loads of tuition stuff on there. Even uh, uh, Dr. Dave, all these guys. Uh, interesting, Niels. aren't they? Meals yeah, is good. I enjoy watching all these guys, and I learn something off everyone. And like I say, even though I think I've got a lot of knowledge of the game, like you never you never stop learning, and uh, you can take that into your own game or your own videos. And uh, there's loads of content out there now, so it's that's free. why the guys are getting so good so quickly because the information's out there and it's free. Information is exactly right. Yeah. Wait, was, that was never there when I first started playing. Oh, you had to buy a DVD or a VHS, oh, didn't you? I'll, I'll go to the Philippines. Break it all. <laughs> Live there for three months. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's even better. If you, if you can do it in person, that's even better. Because of course. The, you can watch as much as you want, but to really understand the game, you really want to be getting lessons one-on-one -on -one with, with uh, top coaches. Uh, you learn so much. Yeah, someone mentioned Shivari there. He's probably the most well-known on YouTube. Yeah, Shivari, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, so we're we're in a golden age of it right now, and I think with with those elements that you've mentioned, the equipment being better, the availability of information, the coaching, you yeah. know, all and of the, all of those elements together. Yeah, and it, it looks like it's not that difficult to put all these videos together, the graphics, everything else. Uh, yeah, everyone's having a go, and there's a lot of good stuff out there. I remember the Break and Run DVD series you guys were on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was probably was it one Melling of as well, yeah. Raj. Yeah, Raj. Yeah, Rodney. Rodney. Mika. <laughs> Mika. <laughs> They were funny. Uh, so big rack here for Maritz. Uh, got back to 6-4 from 6-1. Well, now he's got a nice open table. He needs to keep that cushion, doesn't he? That two to three racks. Yeah. Just keep uh, keep Co at bay. And that's the thing, is that you always know your opponent's capable of running, getting back into the game three or four racks, but with Maritz, you just got to stay patient because you've got to think, you've got, you'd have to be very unlucky to not get another opportunity. Agreed. And so when he gets it, just make sure you keep that cushion. So... 7-4 and you're breaking again. Yeah, Tor Lowry. I like his stuff. That Tor was Lowry. Game. That's the one. He's, he's managed the angle here nicely. I don't see a, I don't see a problem here. So he's going to get himself up to 7. Nice and easy. Doesn't want to be straight. Mm. Doesn't want to be straight. Yep. Could just draw it back to his chalk though, can't he? No? Or forward? Could do. Force, force draw. Force draw. Force punch draw. I'll just go forward. He's going to go try and come above it by the looks of it. That was a confident stroke. Well, that's confidence in the table and knowing the table also. So, yeah, played that beautiful. Yeah, very nice. Let's see. Um, again, he was a little bit stretched on the last one, and I've seen him miscue with the uh, with the extension on. At a key moment, he made a miscue in a previous match. Not, not, not the same here, so... Again, nice. Uh, the, the crowd is really, uh, really respectful. There. You see the VIP tables and, and the bleachers on the right. Bleachers have probably got a better view than the VIP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't get the service there. You don't get the food. Yeah, and the food is really good here, and the stuff. There's a kid sat there on the bleachers with uh, his mum there in the pink. Oh, he's yeah. uh, he's being coached down at Society Billiards in Manhattan right now, oh, okay. and uh, begged his mum to come up here today. He said, Mom, take me up to uh, to Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> so she's now got a day out, a forced day out. Yeah, I think I met those two at the expo recently. That's right. They've been down there traveling all over. He's, yeah. a, he's a good young talent, that kid. Mm. He was uh, playing with Skylar and, uh, and Billy on the outer tables as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see Heli Sanderson in the crowd from the UK. He's uh, a, 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 to a touring uh, a traveling touring player these days. He's going to playing all, all the events. Canada. He's going to Wisconsin, sponsored by Jacoby. Yeah, he's getting around. 
trying to get his education and improve his game. It's the only way to do it, isn't it? It's to yeah. travel. And think about it, that's what Jason did. Mm. Yeah, Jason, he'd been in America quite some time then. Yeah, he did, yeah. I spent some time on the road with him back in 2012. Yeah, yeah, and Phil Burford. Phil Burford, Adam Shaw and me. Mm. I learned a lot just in that. <laughs> How long have you been over here now? It's my ninth year. Mm. Nice. Yeah, New York. I want to move back, though. I want to move back. What, to UK? Yeah, one day. I want to retire there. I couldn't mm. retire in New York. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, too expensive. Um, unless I go on Matrium Pro Tour, you know. <laughs> Outside the top 60. Nice shot here, look at this. I'll be like Happy Gilmore with the big check at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where's my Where's my giant check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this last place, sir. Last place. Does this cut? It does, yeah. I think it cuts, but I, I'm wondering if he can maybe spin it. It can get yeah. on the left side of the... Can uh, miss the four? Yeah, he did. Just perfect. Off. How good is he? Oh, wow. Yeah, killed that nicely. It's like one of them little quick strokes, but not quit. <laughs> yeah, quick. Yeah, it's a tough yeah. one to explain that one. Yeah, I mean, he could have run into the eight, but you know, you, you don't want to. You don't yeah. want to bump balls unless you have to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great tip there. Don't bump balls unless you need to. Sometimes you need to, so you just got to practice them. It's important to practice uh, kissing into balls, but also knowing your angles. Yeah, I mean, you're I think F and Rays was the best ever at those type of shots. Yeah. I know you're a big advocate for straight pool as well. Mm. And that's another a one that you'll learn how to break clusters yeah. and continue. Yeah. And eight ball. Eight ball too. Eight ball, straight pool, very connected games in my opinion. I love my eight ball. Yeah. On the right equipment. Yeah. Not on a massive <laughs> Brunswick. Oh, so Teng is 7-5 up on Shane now. Wow. Well, I remember Teng beat, uh, Teng beat Raga. No, I'm not surprised at all. I'm just because people think because Shane won ten nil, he's run seven racks. That's it. The tournament's over, right? Just but every game. game, how can you, how can you, how can you double up and do that again? Yeah, I mean it's very, very unlikely that's going to happen again. Uh, so, and the problem is that, like we said before, there's twenty guys that can do the same thing. They probably just can't do it as consistently. Yeah, Shane's one of them that can do it consistently. Oh, definitely. But you kind of see the type of shot that, that Moritz just played. You know, it, yeah. the guy's in such good form right now. Mm. He's just pumped that ball cross table and, mm. he, and he's finished six to eight, eight inches away from the eight. <laughs> yeah. And he should make this, but he has left it a little bit tougher than what he would like. Good pre-shot, isn't he? Great yeah, pre foot and a nice deep breath. Yeah, and just, you can see mechanics. Into the shot. Mechanics are great. A nice round of applause. Yeah, he's on a good run, isn't he? He's obviously finished second in the World Cup pool. He's had some other high finishers. He came off last week. He lost in the final, 13-12 to 12 against Carlo Biardo from 10-4. Should have won, but yeah. it hasn't let it affect him. And now he's here in the final eight, two racks away from a place in the semi-final in probably a slightly tougher field than last week, I would say. I think so. I think this is a slightly... Don't be wrong, like, last, last last week was tough also, but I think this is... Obviously, you've got likes of Shane Van Bone in here, Jason here, the the Cole brothers, so yeah. I think... And, and, definitely uh, stronger. There's uh, less Chan players, Yulung. Yeah, there's definitely a slightly stronger field here this week. It's a stronger 64 than they... They had 96, so... Yeah. And I think the conditions here are, are definitely better. Yeah. Yeah, no respect to the old Brunswick tables, but... Uh, the yeah. new Razzle tables get my vote. Yeah, they're very uh, cost effective too. I mean, mm -hmm. for for under five grand, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, I mean a good a good kind of intermediate table. There you go. With that. that that delayed draw break. I need to really work on that for the U.S. Open. They figured it out, didn't they? It's just massive, isn't it? But will he get away with that break though in the matchroom events? Because they do warn you for hitting them too soft, and that's definitely on the soft side. Again, it's down to interpretation. Yeah, exactly. And like, but what, you do interpret? see these referees warning the players, I'm thinking, so then it forces you to hit them hard. If you're going to do that, give them speed guns. You know exactly. I mean? How do you determine what's soft and hard when exactly. uh, everyone's got different power? I mean, I, I can't break the balls as hard as I used to do because of what's happened to me. True. So that's going to be my, uh, my uh, card. <laughs> you've, you've said it on air now, mate. That's it. Well, it's true, though. I've taken note. <laughs> Don't listen to Darren. I've got the card in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So uh, that's a what? It's come out good as well, right? 
Look at this. So this, yeah, just that winning that one rack, stopping stopping the momentum. He's got the momentum back, and this is why a winner breaks massive. It's huge, isn't it? I mean, he had the confidence there to to arc the cue ball around the eight. Mm. To create, do you do, to do you prefer winner break or alternate break? Uh, it's the age old discussion, but I'm actually a fan of um, alternate break. Yeah, me too. Just because, as a player, as a spectator, winner breaks. As a player, yeah. alternate break. Because then, you know, I need the opportunity to showcase my break, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know if Kao Ping Chung's played good or bad in this match. And this is what really frustrates me with winner break. Exactly, because you, you, there's such long periods where he might be sat down. Well, know? he has done. I'm guessing 60% of these racks have been break and runs from Moritz. Agreed. So I don't know if Kao Ping Chung's played great or not in this match. And that really frustrates me. Uh, I'm, I think it's like tennis. You've got you've got to have a serve. There's no other, that's what I'm saying. There's no other sport out there or game. You know, golf. You both get to tee yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. You both should get the same opportunity. At, at, at least try and level it up as much as possible, and then it's up down to yourself when yeah. it comes to the break. I mean, yeah, there's some luck on the break, of course, but at least if you know how to break, unless you get very unlucky, you're going to have a shot, whether it's a push out or whatever. I mean, I, I used to talk to Earl, you know. And if you can like, you know, mm. if if you can talk to her, there's some there's some pearls that come out of him, right? Oh yeah. And he has this format where you both get the opportunity to break and run. You know what I mean? Mm. I think yeah. that's a great format yeah. for TV. Definitely, yeah. You break you break and run them out, and then I'll break and run them out, and yeah. then you you can grade it based on who got the more balls, you know, or Yeah, I mean I just I just think you should get your opportunity at the table. Uh, like tennis. You serve and then I serve. Blah there you blah. Go. Yeah. Because uh, pool is very much like that. If you've got the break it's a huge advantage. It's massive. It is massive. And like you say, they the ones that figure out the break, the break quicker, like these guys have, they've got a huge advantage. Well, like I said earlier, I mean, uh, Lee, Van, Lee Van's got to the final 16. He's probably walked in the room today. He might have been feeling unbelievable. <laughs> feeling absolutely perfect. Oh, I'm on top of my game. Today could be my day. And he sits there for 10 racks. It's, yeah, he, he, he might have played one shot in 10 racks, right? Very true. Which is just ridiculous in my opinion. Very it's true. like Federer playing Nadal, and Federer gets to serve every every game. Right. Right. So unless you break his serve, you're not going to serve. Right. I mean, you can't win. Very true. Right? You can't win. So if you're playing win a break, and uh, one guy just obviously gets his break going, mm -hmm. you might not shoot. So Levan's yeah. lost ten zero, and yeah. he's come off the table. Obviously, he's seen it all before, so it's nothing new to him. But he's thinking like. Yeah, but you're this five, is nonsense. You're you know? five grand in expenses before you've even arrived. Exactly. You know, but he's, he's, you need the opportunity to play. Yeah, he's on his way to the US Open now. I'm thinking, well, this this could happen again in two days. Yeah. And I'm playing the best pool of my life right now, but nobody knows. So you have to be <laughs> mentally tough too, right? Yeah. Well, um, I, I, that's why I said on my post last night, pool is the toughest game in the world. I don't care what anyone says. I'm not saying it's the most difficult game to play. First mistake, Moritz. Oh, oh yeah. But mentally, it's... It's in huge, my opinion, it? it's by far the toughest game in the world. It's by not far. even close to anything. Yeah, I've often said that it's uh, it's sixty percent mental, thirty percent is is talent, skill, and then ten percent luck. Yeah, it's just uh, mental. It's I, just crazy. I, I think it's like that. You've got to be somewhat special to play this game for a living and be successful. I really do believe that. Agreed. Because you can play golf and play it to be hundred be hundred ranked in the world, and you're making a million dollars a year. <laughs> Tennis is the same. Soccer is the same. True. American football is the same. True. It's just unbelievable that they get, they get paid for being average. Really? <laughs> average. At that, at that <laughs> level, I mean. Very true. But it's just Paul, the guy what's number 17 in the world, is probably broke. That's awful, isn't it? But they are creating a platform for it now, and we're starting to see it. And I think over the next five years, you'll, you, you'll, see, a, um, you'll see career pool players coming back. Oh, definitely, yeah. Oh, it's definitely improving, but it needs to massively improve. Yeah, it does. Um, but they'll get over the hurdle with the WPA. I think every every federation has got involved at some point when they've been uh, mm. happening darts, didn't it? Happened to uh, PDC and all that. Happening snooker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to take time. But well, hopefully we get there. True. The guy here, I'd rather play snooker than these pockets are like Grand Canyon. Well, the problem you got Andrew Downs is that you've seen a lot of snooker players play on these tables and they can't make a ball. So yeah, figure that out. It's it's a different style altogether. I don't think you can play both, honestly. 
to a high standard. Well, we said that. I mean, Judd Trump missed about 55 balls in two matches last year at the US Open. Equipment's different. Yeah. Style's different. It's different hit a ball. Different hit. Mm. But, yeah, you're hearing all these variations. People that don't know Darren, you know, he dominated for, for a good 10 years in this game. Um, so it's always great to hear his opinion, great to hear his, uh, you know, the lessons and experience that these younger players coming up have to really pay homage to, in my opinion. And players that we're seeing now, obviously, and, you know, the likes of Maritz and Filler, you know, they've all been... They've all been watching these guys, you know, over the, over the last 10, 15 years. It's insane. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and the good thing we all turn it break is that you're going to see a lot closer matches. Yeah, you are. Yeah, every, I'm not saying uh, he hasn't had shots here, coping Chung, but he's not had easy openers or it's been, he's, he's coming to the table where he's snookered or he's, he's safe all the time. You know what I mean? He's, uh, it's hard to get the momentum back. And here's the thing as a spectator and, you know, someone that sat down watching the stream, you know, there's a potential here that Co. Well, he didn't scratch, but he's he's got no shot. Yeah, um, he has the potential to come back and win the next five and win the rack, win the win the set. Definitely, yeah. you know. What do you do here? Do you just roll onto the nine? I might play the very negative safety. Well, I'd roll onto it, but make sure you roll onto <laughs> it so that the cue ball and the nine ball are sort of facing the rail. He was very lucky to make it. Even. Right. So you got to put the cue ball right on top of the nine ball here. I mean, I'm nine four. Do I do I go for it? You know, it's the well, I think this is crazy. Is he going for it? Yeah, oh, this is a wrong shot. Whoom. It's a wrong shot. It's just oh, absolute suicidal shot. Shake hands, and that's a frustration shot, isn't it? Yep. Makes no sense at all playing that shot. Yeah. Oh, that's right, it. Maurice right is very world. happy. A very happy young man in another semi final. It's been a pleasure to commentate with you, Del. Pleasure, mate, always. I uh, love seeing you traveling around in the US, and hopefully, see you down at uh, Atlantic City. Yep. I'll uh, come the weekend. Yeah, it's my I'll... second home, so it's great. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be spending a lot of time in America again. Probably 50% of my time will be in the States. Yeah, so what do we think the next matches are? Uh, is that What's the semi-final looking like? All right, so next matches should be coming up soon. We're going to be taking a break. We don't have any times yet, but uh, I'm guessing the next uh, hour or so. Um, and uh, updated scores, uh, Shane is tied at 8-8. Wow. And uh, let's see, Chang Yu Lung has defeated Raga. So Shame. that's one match in the books. So after going Hill Hill with Billy, he, uh, was it Hill Hill with Billy? Oh, no, uh, it was. It was I think Billy did go Hill Hill. Oh, it was just, just off, one off the hill. No, it, it was 10 8. 10 8. 10 8. Okay. Yeah. yeah, one off the hill. Well, yeah, I got the scores right here. Eight, yeah, ten. and the, uh, what's his face? <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, Chang, he, he missed a great chance to win 10 7 as well. He was unseeded, remember? But, Unseeded in this event. Yeah, I mean that's just <laughs> but the same with Chang Yu Lung. Chang Yu Lung's not seeded at the US Open. Really? Right, one of the best players in the world because he's not been active on the international wow. scene. Oh, there's floaters in that US Open. It's like if Wu Cha Ching was playing. Yeah. And Chang Yu Lung uh, and uh, Ch uh, Jing Ling Chang, that's three of the best players in the world who you might uh, what let's say Ruaz could draw in the first round or any top seed, seeded 64 player. So it's just, well, that's the pull we'll speak about in the commentary is that you don't always get the best players in the tournaments because True. the pool is so global. We all think we know who the top 20 players in the world are, but there's probably another 20 players floating around in Malaysia yeah. and Singapore who we don't know about. Yeah. And eventually when the game gets globe, uh, more financially uh, doable and we, we all can make Stable, money from yeah. it, like the big, big, big sports, then you're going to see 50 unbelievable great players and the standard is just going to keep rising and rising. And then what will happen is that other players from different sports will start trying their hand like Chinese pool, snooker, English pool. And trust me, there's plenty of good players what will do at this, do well at this game if they put the work in. That's what I mean. They have to switch full time, i got to agree. Uh, can we see Shane's table at all or no? Yeah. I think there's a couple of people. Maybe we can uh, watch the end of the Shane match. Yeah, let me uh, try to transition over there. It's going to take me... A hot second. No we'll get those in a minute. And uh, big shout out to the Big Apple Extreme. I mean, obviously, where the guy's talking, but these guys, I think this stream is as good as ever, anything I've ever seen. Yeah, Mad Apple Extreme, right? I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, the quality, uh, the setup they've got here. And, uh, yeah, these guys work for Peanuts, so make sure you support them. And they're from Appleton, which makes them even <laughs> nicer and better. And believe it or not, when it's not cold there, it is a beautiful part of the country. All right. Oh, here we go. Is this it? 
This is Tay, right? Or ten? This uh yeah, I gotta take off the scoreboard. But this looks like Shane's table. Okay. Yeah, we're about, well, are we staying to do this? I mean, mate, you, you got time? Are we going to stick? stick I'm on? all right. Have you got time? Yeah, of course. The, the bar's not moving. Yeah, it would have been nice to get some more coffee, but there we go. We can't have everything, can we? And this match right now is 8-8, eight, eight, just good. to give you guys a heads up. We're at 8-8, eight, eight. Shane at the table. So, is there any coffee at the back still? Yeah. Might be able to get another cup for you, mate. Uh, just a dab, yeah, if there is one. So Shane's actually got himself way back into this match, right? So he was, oh wow, wow what a shot. As soon as I said that, he was... Uh, and that's all because he was thinking about the cue ball. He had to overspin the cue ball, and he forgot to make the one ball. And I've been guilty of that many times. So you're at 8-8 eight, eight currently. But he's left him tricky here, because he can make the one, but getting shape on the two ball is very, very difficult. I think that's the first positive thing Gerard said. Thanks for the table. Thanks for the free stream, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning is that, in. Is that mine? Yes, yeah, for you, mate. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this stream's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really get you a coffee. Just go ask. Yeah, and when I went down to their place at the Mad Apple, uh, he never got me one coffee. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, ten's got hit. Oh, Always missed oh, it. Oh, oh, you, this has got to be nerves. This is all I'm saying. Yeah, and that shot there wasn't difficult because he was playing for the bank on the two ball, which was the right shot. And if you look at the bank on the two ball, the cue ball would have naturally come round for the free, yep. as long as you don't get hooked behind the seven. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine Shane might try the same shot here, try and make the one and play for the bank. But it, can he hold it? Do you think it goes by the four? Maybe if he comes long on it? What well, can he get there? Yeah, I'm just, oh, he's going to play it slow. Wow, look at this. Got a touch on him. And he's covered it. Yeah. He played for the bank as well, though. Never easy when you're slow rolling them, Dell, like that. Oh, it is. From distance. Uh, if, if I was going to bet anyone that could do it, though, it'd be Shane. He loves slow rolling the ball. All right, we got the score up on the board. Oh, wow, look at that. We've even got a score in. Jeez, you guys are quick. So he's going to kick at this. This is a short, short side kick, so it's tricky. You've got to make sure you, you execute this one. What I mean by that is that the cue ball's close to the rail is hitting, so it's harder, it's harder to judge. So you might play a little draw here. I think you put pace on it. Yeah, just a little draw, just like that. Oh wow, nice shot! Played. Cue ball's tracking away though, tracking away. It's gonna, it's gonna spudge. Yeah, you guys, that's very unfortunate. Jump cross bank. Yeah, <laughs> never even thought about that, but yeah, these <laughs> days that's to. probably the right shot. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm telling you, I'm ten thousand hours in. Yeah, that's living in New York, that. <laughs> I'd be thinking about that, you know. And I was kicking it. In. Just around, around the back of the nine, between the four and the nine, good hit. Good hit. Will he get lucky? Will he get lucky? I've not, I've not really seen no. this, guy, this guy play too much. What's I've actually his, played him a couple of times. He's a good player. What's his uh, A good, country? steady, steady player. And I'm guessing he's probably around the same age as me, uh, mid to late 40s. Is it another Chinese Taipei? Yep. I mean, there's, there's one, two, three. There's three players, Chinese Taipei, still in it. Very yeah, strong. he's been around quite some time, but he's like lived in the shadows of the other guys, let's say. But when he's hitting the ball nicely, he's very good on the high. But when he's not on his game, then he just, I don't know, he just doesn't look the uh, the part, let's say. Uh, but when he's playing well, he's, he's a handful. Yeah, and I think he's showcasing it here. I mean, he's already played and beat a couple of great players. Oh, he plays great. The only thing I'd probably is his weakness is probably his mental side of the game. Oh, right, okay. So I guess that's why he's not really kicked on and won anything major. Uh, but yes, he's a very, very good player. Oh, very good. Shane's going to get to the hill first, though, by the looks of it. And these are the matches you've got to escape, Dell. If you're going to win tournaments, you're always going to have one or two matches where you probably should have got beat, could have got beat, and you escape. 8-5 down, he should really get beat, right? Yeah, especially when you got the other guys got the break as well. And win a break, sure. So, yeah, you need a bit of luck. And this is the little bit of luck what Shane's had by his opponent helping him out. Not saying he's been lucky within the game, but you need a bit of help from your opponent. Yeah, definitely so. And this single elimination format for the last 16, I, I think I prefer it. Good Not just shot. for speed, but I think it adds a little oh. bit more pressure to it too. Yeah. Didn't play the best shot there, but shouldn't be no problem. Yeah, nicely done. Puts him on the hill. 
Oh, no, 9-9? Nine, nine? Is it 9-8? Nine, nine, I've, I've lost nine, it. Nine. Sorry. Uh, We're on the wrong side, mate. There I'm, we go. I'm on, <laughs> on the wrong side. Com, com, I, computers I, uh, in the pool will... So I close. marked it wrong. I just fixed it. Sorry about that. That's their, that's their first error. We'll let them off. Uh, Tank can play. These commentators really don't keep up with Paul. We didn't say he can't play. Obviously, he's a great player. He's just not consistently won tournaments. And he's he's, uh, not, he's not on the scene. I played the guy. I know how, how good he plays. Yeah, I'm just saying I haven't seen him in, in the US too much. Yeah. He, uh, he's, he's obviously a, a, a world-class player. There's no doubt about that. I ain't going to be jumping out of this commentary box and telling him, do you want to play for a few thousand right now? Uh, that uh, that that's how good he plays. I mean, you you probably offered Gerard <laughs> a seven out, couldn't you? Six <laughs> out. I'd probably give him a six out based on those comments. Well, so. the way he's uh, Gerard looks like he's a <laughs> he's a top tier player, so I'm not going <laughs> to challenge him. And I haven't seen him in person. He might be uh, seven foot tall, and uh, pick me up by his left arm <laughs> or his left finger. No, I just uh, there's no reason to get agitated in the chat, guys. This is all uh, no, this is all good. being done out the, it's the good spirit of our heart. Constructive, very constructive, exactly. So, um. it's, it's very fine details between Shane Van Boning and mm -hmm. let's say Del Del Sim. Very. Right? <laughs> there's different <laughs> levels, but very very close levels. It's just uh, you're talking like a ball, or maybe he does this a little bit better, or he's a slightly stronger mentally. That's all it is. And that's the difference between these top top tier boys and uh, <laughs> us just average pool players. <laughs> very true, very true. Oh, good pool players. Yeah, no, I understand it. I'm only having fun. And uh, that's all we want to do while we're here. And Neil, Neil Strickland should be the main commentator, not these clueless dudes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are right. Compared to Will Strickland, we are clueless. we got no clue. The man's a genius. Well, I definitely agree with that, James. 100%. I mean, Hill, he's like a dictionary. This is a hanger, isn't it? Is it a hanger? They make this, and then we go Hill, Hill. This is it. Draw back about two feet. Hanger this shot. <laughs> Told you. Oh, <laughs> he nearly made it. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he played a two-way shot. Very nice. Imagine if he made it, though. It's even on the, four, on the three. Well, to play pool for a living, Vinny, uh, I think we all lose our marbles a little. Just some more than others. Can Shane see this? Can he see it? Can we see an edge of it? I think he can, can see, the see edge. it, but I don't think he can see it to make it in the side pocket. So he might play a two way bank here. Maybe. Can he miss a seven though? You can cut it in the corner, right? Oh, really? I think you're right. Yeah, cut it in the it. corner. Missed it. Oh, he's hit the corner. It's a tough shot. Yeah, but I think he's, has he got away with it? But on these pockets, was it a tough shot? <laughs> Can you believe he's missed it? I can't, actually. Has he left it? Has he left the edge of the two ball? I think he's he's got the pot and angle, you know? So I think we could be heading for Hill Hill. Mm, still a bit of work to do, though. Yeah, everything else is open. Four to the five, perhaps. Yep. Five's a big shot, I think. But you've, you've just got to finish on the high side of it, haven't you? Or the low side of it, sorry, as we look. You've got a nice kiss there. The sevens a sl could be a slight blocking natural path. True, very true. So he needs to get good on this pink four. Don't want to leave too much angle. And he's played that nicely. Because I don't think he can use a second rail here, Dell. He's got to play one rail. So this is all about, oh, does it, does it, uh, he he's looks got, at the, he's got to smooth it, the combination he? there. I don't like that. He's got to smooth it, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got to smooth it and get, get the right speed of the cue ball. Yeah, I mean, that's seven. If the seven wasn't there, he might go two rails, eh? Definitely. Oh, I don't big. like that. Seven's big, see? I didn't like that. I don't understand that. Upstate Al says it's like, it's like, it's like a beach ball. <laughs> seven's like a beach ball in the middle of the mm -hmm. table. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that shot. But he's still got a shot, and the eight ball should help him if he Just if he decides to play with follow and hit it quite softly. Slow the cue ball, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or do you try and draw and get into the cue? Well, yeah, he's rolling it. Got to be a little bit careful here, though. The eight, he could get snookered behind the eight. Yeah, he needs to give it enough of a bump, doesn't he? he needs to bump it in and out of bulk, which he's yeah, done. Played it nice, but dead straight. Where's that seven ball going? Don't go in the side. 
It might go on the side, but he's got to be right behind it. He don't want to be on the rail, does he? And that's because he bumped it. He didn't need to bump it. Does it go in the side? I think it does. What, from this yeah. This short rail? Wow. Yeah. Wow. The side pockets are playing big. I think he's playing rail first, Dill. <sighs> Get closer to his work. He's going to miss it. He's gonna big miss. pocket. He's going to miss. It should be okay. There you go. Oh, he's paid for the bank. Did he? He's not on it. Does it cut? Well, we we're about to find out. And uh, we're only commentating from the angle we can see here. So only he knows. I think he's going to, he has to play it because the bank's not on. Mm. The bank's way too short. Yep, I think he's got to play safe here. So he's going to two rail the seven and get the cue ball behind the eight. And the, the seven onto the short rail. Yeah, this doesn't cut. I've played on this table. Well, on this table, but these tables, sorry. I mean, he's played a pretty decent safe there, actually. Yep. So Shane, I like how he's played it because he's made sure that he don't leave the bank. I mean, the bank's on, isn't it? Mm, don't think so. Even if it is, watch I him, don't know. Watch him absolutely pump this we'll one. We'll see. I think, he's, I think he's made his decision. <laughs> <laughs> nope. All right, fair one. Oh, lucky, 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 <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky. But it's got wow. a bank shot, but what is the eight ball makeable afterwards? Wow. But I think you got to go for the bank now. Just leave yourself a long shot on the eight. You don't want to get too clever and try and draw off three rails with this. <laughs> Just make the bank <laughs> and then worry about the eight ball afterwards. <laughs> no, Oof. no, no, no. Tried speed. to be too greedy by trying to get shape on the eight, which makes the bank three times more difficult. So that's a big lesson for you guys watching there. Just get yourself a shot on the eight. Back yeah. yourself to make that long eight. Cut it in and come round the table. Yeah, eight was open, wasn't it? And Shane comes to the table thinking, thank you very much, Mr. Ling. <laughs> I love you a long time. <laughs> oh, man. He's going to draw this back and that's the end of the game. The bank was there for sure, but and Shane, like you said, he escaped. I think he escaped this one, and you need that if you're going to pull up, pull off the title. Yep, and they'll probably win the tournament now. Yeah, well, uh, it's been a pleasure, mate. Uh, yep. I enjoyed uh, chatting all things Paul. Yep, even though nobody can understand us, <laughs> and we're not. Uh, so we worthy of the job, but we do apologise. We tried our best as average pool players. <laughs> we'll, uh, Hopefully, we're back for the next match. <laughs> we'll, we'll go back to England, play snooker, mate. Gentlemen, it was awesome. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with the semi-finals. Stick around, <laughs> and we'll see you in a few. <laughs>
Okay, for folks, uh, we're going to shut it down here, make sure that we don't get cut in the middle of some of these semifinal and final matches. So uh, watch for the feed again. It's going to be coming back up, but we're going to shut it down right now, and uh, we'll be back in a matter of minutes.